starting with Dallas and then going over to Denver, Tampa, Kansas City. And, you know, it's just one of those situations where he's somebody who is trying to take the best from all those organizations and try to implement for him a terrific game plan. And now let's move to the Indianapolis Colts and their quarterback. Well, Jack Trudeau is somebody who, again, is somebody who is playing kind of a bridesmaid role. He is, in effect, being the veteran quarterback that's trying to establish some wins for the Colts in preparation for their $15 million man, George. Whether or not it's going to be a quarterback controversy if Trudeau leads them to victory today remains to be seen. But his 329 yards last week in the victory over the Eagles certainly indicates the fact that this man can play the game. The Indianapolis Colts won the toss and they elected to receive and they will be moving from our left to our right. And the Colts home in the dome. The record is 17 and 9 in the Hoosier Dome under coach Ron Meyer. And so Nick Lowry will be kicking off for Kansas City with number 85 Stacy Simmons and number 26 Alan Grant the return men for the Colts. Grant is the rookie out of Stanford and Simmons is the rookie out of Florida. And it is nice to be inside in Indianapolis today because it is pouring rain outside and we are underway. And here is Alan Grant. Grant past the 25 a nice return across the 30 yard line. Jeff Donaldson with the stop. The offense for the Colts. Their offensive line young and inexperienced, and they are learning on the job. Backs and receivers. The Colts will start with a three wide receiver set. That's the strength of their offense. When they go to four wide receivers, the tight end will come out, and the rookie, Stacey Simmons, will come in as a speed receiver. 24 yards on the kickoff return, and a first down at the 32-yard line. Action fake, dumped over the middle to Bentley, and he is dropped at the 35. A gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Dino Hackett made the stop. The Chiefs front seven. They're making the big plays. They're forcing the turnovers. Now, when they go to their nickel package, the two inside linebackers will come out, and J.C. Pearson and Stan Petrie will then join a secondary that will have to take away Bill Brooks, Indianapolis wide receiver, take him out of the Colts' offense as he is their big play receiver. Second down. And here is Bentley. And there's nothing there. Dino Hackett makes the play there. He's one of the more underrated players on this team. While Derek Thomas and Albert Lewis and people of this have been getting a lot of credit, Dino Hackett with his 4-5 speed continues to pursue from the inside. He's reminiscent a little bit of Jack Lambert of old, somebody that can go sideline to sideline and run him down. And so the Colts face their first third down situation. And they bring four wide receivers. Danny Morgan is wide to the near side. Brooks, Hester, Morgan and Simmons. And the give off inside to Bentley has the first down. Lloyd Burris makes the tackle just shy of the 45 yard line. Well, Albert Bentley is a good 70 to 80 percent of the running game here for the Colts. And right there, it's a standard drop play, which is a good call on third and five. Kansas City left the middle open, as you can see, if, if Burris is going to make the tackle eight yards downfield, that's to indicate good things for the Colts. Position. Now they're going to a two tight end offense, Charlie. And as I mentioned to us yesterday, they very much want to establish the run because, quite frankly, the Colt running game has been anemic, minus Eric Dickerson. Bentley, the remaining back, and he carries. And he works his way for about five yards. It'll be second down. Sally Amua and Neil Smith make the tackle. You know, I wanted to mention something about Albert Bentley. A couple of years ago, Charlie, when they made the trade to get Eric Dickerson, Albert Bentley was averaging like 92 yards a game. He was on a pace for a 1,500-yard season. 
And then when Dickerson came in, he was relegated to a backup role. And a lot of times what happens as a player is you get that backup mentality. Albert Bentley has to realize that he can assert himself here. He is the man. And he's got to get going here for the Colts to be successful. Double tight end set. So Brian Baldinger, the offensive guard, moves out to the other tight end. And they move behind him. There's a flag down. And Albert Bentley will pick up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. But we'll check out the markers. Bill Moss makes the tackle along with Neil Smith. Looked to me like they might have caught Pat Beach holding from the back side. Albert Bentley thus far has all of the coach yardage. 14 rushing and four holding. receiving. 81 offense. 10 yards. Second down. You know, this is the sort of call, Charlie, that drives a coach crazy. Pat Beach is on the other side of the field. The play is going left, and Beach is the tight end to the right. And really, even if he doesn't make the block, the man over him is not likely to make the play. So that's one of those mental errors that drives a coach crazy. So the ball goes back to the cold 40-yard line. And it'll be second down and 15. Three wide receivers on the offensive set. And we have flags and whistles. Zephyrus moved. Ball start, 73, offense. Zephyrus Five Moss, yards. the left tackle. And so the Colts now plagued by two costly penalties, and the ball goes back to the 35-yard line. And remember, they started this drive on their own 32. That's one of the great names, isn't it? Zephyrus? Zephyrus. I'd imagine that when he was in school, it wasn't like, which Zephyrus? <laughs> hey, Zeph. <laughs> Second down and 20. Hester in motion. And it is intercepted and the Chiefs have a turnover. Percy Snow, the rookie from Michigan State, the number one draft choice, has the interception. When we talked to Marty Schottenheimer last night, he was telling us how high he was on Percy Snow. He mentioned the fact that he felt that Kansas City's run defense was not as good as it could be. And I said, well, is the problem the rookie? And he said, absolutely not. He is a player. Percy Snow is the only college football player in history to have both the Butkus and Lombardi Awards. Right there, that's your standard tip drill. Every linebacking and defensive backcourt practices it. He makes a good play there. Big turnover for the Chiefs. Kansas City defensively they have been making the big plays all season long and they continue here with the first turnover and they have the ball at the Colt 45 yard line first down and they open up as expected with Christian Okoye and he's got a couple of yards to the 43 it'll be second down and eight the offensive line for Kansas City is getting better but they must improve over last week where they missed a dozen assignments. Backs and receivers, Kansas City is led by quarterback Steve DeBerg, who is ranked number one in the AFC. Now, we may see Kansas City in a crush offense. Okoye will stay in. The running back and the tight end come out. They're replaced by Rob Thomas and Pete Manley, retaining the option to run with Okoye or to throw. Three wide receivers on the set, and it's second down and eight. DeBerg fires, has the first down. It is Stefan Page. As Kansas City moves, Keith Taylor makes the tackle. And well, a gain of 15. They're giving Stefan a little bit too much respect here. Keith Taylor is at least 10 yards off in the easy slant here. This is really where you should be colliding with the free safety. But look how far back the corner is. Stefan Page got way too much yardage on that. The safety has to come over and make a hit here. DeBerg, very comfortable play action. Of course, that's going to be very effective when you got Okoye back there. And a first down of the Colt 28-yard line. Here's Okoye. Okoye to the 20. A flag is down as Okoye goes to the 16-yard line. It'll be a first down if it stands up. Kurt Larson with the tackle. Matt Vanderbeek, the rookie free agent from Michigan State. Actually, the man who brought him down will be a motion penalty against Kansas City. It's a holding penalty. Excuse me. They'll bring it back. Holding number 83, offense. 10 yards, first down. And that is on page, so they'll bring it back to the 38-yard line. And it'll be first down and 20. Once again, that's curious. What the heck is a wide receiver doing holding when the play is in the middle of the field? 
the umpires and line judges and people on the outside, what they're looking for is they'll look for that left hand to go outside the body of the defender. And if Stefan Page does that, it's automatically going to be holding. But once again, the play was a good 10 yards away from him. Once again, drives coaches crazy. They mark it from the spot of the foul, so it comes back to the 34-yard line, where it is first down. And here is Okoye. Okoye to the 25. He picks up nine on the play. Quintus McDonald makes the tackle. And it'll be second down. The Colts defense, their front seven hampered today as linebacker Dwayne Bickett pulled a hamstring in practice on Thursday and Quintus McDonald is starting in his place. Now when the Colts go to their nickel package, three come out, Sam Clancy, Michael Ball, John Baylor all come in. They join a secondary that also has a man missing, that is Eugene Daniel, who is out with a knee injury. So the Colts are really hurting on defense. Charlie, you got a situation where in the secondary you've got two first-year players and two free agents. And here's Okoye on second down and seven, and he goes to the 22-yard line. So it'll be third down and still about four to go for Kansas City. No score in the ball game. And we have 8.25 and counting time remaining in a very quick first quarter. One of the things that they've been trying to teach Christian to do is make the right cuts. People, people forget that this is a man who's only played organized football now for around six years. If he cuts up a little bit sooner, he gets more yardage, but he just doesn't quite have the football savvy just yet. Savvy enough to lead the league in rushing, though. A flag is down. Free play for Kansas City. It is incomplete, almost intercepted. Colts had two shots at him. Keith Taylor had one shot and Michael Ball had the other, but there were early flags. And I believe the Colts were in the neutral zone. One of the keys to Kansas City's success has been the fact that they do not beat themselves. If you're going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, you're going to have to out-hit them or outscore them, outplay them, whatever it is you're going to have to outdo. But you're not going to beat them by making mistakes. Here on Off third side, and five, this is a defense, crucial, crucial five yards, penalty. First down. Coach offsides. The penalties hurt them on their offensive thrust at the beginning of the ball game and they had a little bit of momentum and then the turnover for Kansas City the Chiefs are now plus nine in the turnover rate category the Colts are now minus eight the best in the AFC for Kansas City the worst for the Colts and opponents have scored 43 points against Indianapolis after turnover and it's a first down at the 17 yard line and here's Okoye hit one tackle and he goes to the 14. One of the things that the defenders are coached to do in this situation is Okoye does like to cut back. The problem is, is that if you have people waiting for him to cut back, then the holes are going to remain open. In that situation, Harvey Armstrong gets good penetration, but when he leaves his vacated spot, that enables Christian to get the extra yardage. Okoye thus for four carries. He's rushed for a total of 17 yards. He accounts for just at 25% of the offense for Kansas City. Charlie, if I had a 260-pounder that could run 4-4, he might get 100% <laughs> of the offense. And he has four yards to the 10. You almost wonder, really, why he doesn't account for about 40% of it. Jeff Harad with the tackle. Little scuffle there between Banks and Hayes. It's kind of a machismo thing. You know, Chip Banks is also a very good story. Here's somebody who's a four-time pro bowler with the Cleveland Browns. Had some problems with drugs. Found himself traded to San Diego, then released, and found himself on the outside looking in. And Ron Meyer and the Colt organization said, we're going to give you another chance. And Chip Banks has played some outstanding football last week against the Eagles. 11 tackles. And he's going to new mustache, too. Yeah, kind of a Hitler-looking thing. Wasn't that goofy? <laughs> yeah. He likes it, though. Said it's his personality coming out. Here's a Koye. Good defensive coverage. Led by Alan Graham. It'll be fourth down and three, and the kicking team will come in. This is good run support by Keith Taylor here. He comes up and makes the play on the outside, even though someone else ends up making the tackle. This forces Christian to stay to the outside. There, Chip Banks gets stuffed, but he forces the play right into Taylor. There's the pursuit. No first down. And it'll be Nick Lowry with a 27-yard field goal attempt. He has hit seven of eight this year. His long being 43, his career long is 58. He's hit that number twice. Perfect conditions indoors from 27 yards out. 
Lafleur with the hold. The snap is good by Frank Winters, and the Kansas City Chiefs move on top. But we have a marker. They're going to call holding in this situation. What happens a lot of times, Charlie, is that the wing on the side, when two people will rush, he can't block both. So what he does is he gives a bump to the man to the inside, and then the guy to the outside, a lot of times he'll just hook. And sometimes he can get away with it. Most times he gets away with it. But in this case, he doesn't. The rusher on the outside is going to get pulled down, and the referee saw it. Hope number 55, offense. Ten yards, fourth down. Called on Lewis Cooper. Well, Lewis Cooper is the wing, as I mentioned, on the outside. You want a strong guy. He's a linebacker in this case. Not really used to blocking. He's used to grabbing people. So how is he going to know how to block? You've got to watch him again now because he's going to be a lot more conscious to the inside. They might be able to get a good rush on it. So now it's a 37-yard attempt. And it is good again. That's why and so Kansas City moves on top by a score of 3 to nothing. Over the Colts. We'll be back to the Hoosier Dome in a moment. With five minutes and 44 seconds left in the first period, it's Kansas City three and Indianapolis nothing here in the Hoosier Dome. And be sure to be with us at halftime for Will, Bob, and O.J. NFL Live, the story behind the story, and a nice story on O.J. cover of uh, this week's Sports Illustrated. Yeah, that's right. But, you know, the question that I have to ask is why don't they run like O.J.? I mean, his team's only played in one playoff game, Charlie. Maybe teams don't want to run like O.J. And here is Simmons on the return. He's to the 15. A nice inside-out move. A flag is down. He's across the 30. And two more flags are dropped. Stan Petrie makes a tackle for Kansas City, but we have flags all over the field. Ever since they took away the rule of blocking below the waist, it's harder and harder. Holding number 59 on the return. Face mask, 45 defense on the tackle. That's a double foul after change of possession. B is awarded the football at the spot of their foul. First down, timeout. B, of course, meaning the team that ends up with the ball, and that is the Indianapolis Colts, and it is well explained by Bob McElwee, and we'll be back in a moment. Here at the Hoosier Dome, Kansas City leading the Colts by a score of three to nothing. Let's check the ticker. Houston is up by seven over San Francisco. The Jets by three over Miami. No score, Tampa Bay and Dallas. Seattle by 13. Interesting story there. And Minnesota leading Detroit. Well, Derek Fenner now has his seventh touchdown of the season, which leads the National Football League. And Pittsburgh by three over San Diego. And the other one went away. Colts now open with four wide receivers. Trudeau, far side, pass is complete to Hester, and he is level. Woo! He is nailed by Kevin Roth. You know, a lot of times in a situation like this, the blame falls on the quarterback. That's a zone situation, and not only the throw, but Jesse Hester has to know that we're in a zone. He's got to slow down and not take that hit from Kevin Ross, because that was a bruiser. You get a chance to see it's a zone defense. They go back to appointed spots. Now, right here, he's leading him into the mat. Right there, he's got to slow down because he knows he's coming. He has to know that defense is a zone, and as a result, Jesse pays the price. Esther, former number one draft choice of the Raiders, and lost his confidence. He's really gotten it back since he's been with the Colts. Well, everybody was very excited about Jesse when he came into the league in 85. He was a first-round pick of the Raiders. Great speed, like 4-2-8 speed. Just a terrific ball player, but for some reason, he lost his confidence and couldn't catch the ball. And we'll be back in a moment. We are back, and we will continue the Jesse Hester story. Well, fortunately, Jesse Hester is up and walking around, and as we mentioned, you know, he had lacked some confidence with the Raiders. They, they traded him for a fifth-round pick to Atlanta, and Atlanta, he struggled as well. And finally, he was reunited here in the Colts with Larry Kinn and the offensive coordinator, who was the quarterback coach for the Raiders when Jesse played there, and he's been playing very well. Last week, 90 yards in pass receptions. Second down and four. Here's Albert Bentley. Bentley tries to spin out of the tackle, and he is pulled down by Percy Snow. And now for an update, let's go to New York City and Bob Cassis. Bob? 
Charlie, after Derek Fenner's league-leading seventh touchdown, it's David Craig to the air for Seattle. He's looking for Tommy Kane, and Kane is able to make the catch in the end zone. Norm Johnson missed the first one, but he hits this point after. Seattle leads at New England, 13-0, Charles. Surprise. Bam. That was Paul McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you sound would, like Bob Costas. I was going to say, I thought, he, I yeah. thought we'd switch channels. If we, we did. Okay. We did. <laughs> Low snap, third down and five. It is intercepted. J.C. Pearson. Second turnover of the ball game by the Colts. Second interception by Kansas City. And this is the way that Kansas City has been winning their ball game. Well, the word ill-advised comes to mind with this throw. First of all, it starts off badly, panics a little bit with a low snap. Now you can see the happy feet are coming a little bit, and off his back foot, turning completely the other way, it appears that he throws right to J.C. Pearson. That now gives Kansas City, I believe, 14 turnovers, which is probably tops in the National Football League. Who got it? Number 90? Was that Neil Smith? Neil got Smith a got, got just a, a little bit of a yeah. piece of it, but still, Bentley wasn't even looking in the backfield. That was a pass that should have never been thrown. And so Kansas City leading 3-0 as a first down on the Colts' 20-yard line. Play action. A flag is down all the time in the world. The pass is complete over the middle to Bill Jones. And he goes to about the 5-yard line, but there was a marker. Jeff Harrod is the man who made the tackle. Bill Jones... 12th round draft choice in 89. Then he had a wrist injury. Illegal then he was motion. On the development squad. Offense. Five yards, first down. And the motion call on Bill Jones. Bob Mack, we saw the move right from the get go. Me? Yeah. Me? Are you sure it was me? I don't think I did that. Did he? Let's see. Right here, he can't move. The back can't move. You get a chance to see the fullback as he comes up, taking a look. Uh, oh, he got, yeah, he oh, did. Man. Yes. Yeah, that was close. Yeah. That was close. So the ball goes back to the 25-yard line, be first down and 15. And uh, when Bill Jones was on the development squad last year, he said, I just felt like I was being redshirted in the NFL. Didn't let it bother me. Got ready for next year, which is now this year. Well, that's good for him because if $1,000 a week, I might have had a different attitude. Here's a Koya to the 21-yard line. It'll be second down and 11. Harvey Armstrong, the nose tackle, is the man who brought him down now in the turnover game. Kansas City is a plus 10. And the Colts are a minus 9. So you have the highs and the lows in that category. Here's Marty Schottenheimer. But he misses son Brian. You know, Brian usually at, at the home games at least is behind him with the cord. Falling around. He's a high school quarterback at Blue Valley High School. The record is 6-0 and on Friday night. He threw for two touchdowns. He ran for another and stayed there for homecoming and the dance. I don't blame him. Second and 11. Play action. It is high and it is incomplete. He overthrows Page. And it'll be third down and 11. Keith Taylor had the cover. Steve DeBerg opts for that one-handed one handed fake handoff, which is he has the ball in the same hand. Take a look at this. This is novel. A lot of coaches don't like it because of the fact that the defense can see the ball, but Steve likes it. And, of course, you shook hands with him last night and showed that the guy has, like, an extra digit over you. He He's does, he does hand. have big hands. He said, well, I have large hands for a quarterback. He has large hands. Well, of course, they couldn't call him Steve Big Hands de Berg. I think that one was already taken, wasn't it? It, does, it doesn't have that kind of a ring to it. No, it? not at all. Third Very shotgun, third and 11. Todd McNair is in the offensive set. He's back to block, and he goes out as a receiver. And the pass is deep, and it is caught at the two. And a spin move by Rob Thomas. He has his second touchdown of the season. He got away from Michael Ball. It looked for all the world the ball was going to get an interception in that situation. But Thomas made a great play as an aggressive receiver to come in and just take it away from him. Really, it appears here that DeBerg just throws the ball up for grabs. He gets good protection. This is actually pretty good coverage. You can see right here, he's, he's got the interception. He thinks, and all of a sudden, the vertical of Rob Thomas and the 360 spin gets him into the end zone. Nice, aggressive play by Thomas. That's what quarterbacks like to have as a receiver willing to go after the football in traffic. DeBerg has now thrown seven touchdown passes, no interceptions. Here's the extra point. And so the two turnovers, Kansas City, two interceptions, a field goal and a touchdown. They lead 10 to nothing. 
This is Charlie Jones and Todd Christensen with 2.40 left to go in the first quarter. It's Kansas City 10, Indianapolis nothing, indoor in the Hoosier Dome. J.C. Pearson with the interception. A 20-yard drive in three plays. The touchdown pass covering 21. Both interceptions have been converted into points for Kansas City. Stacey Simmons on the return. Lloyd Burris with the tackle. Lewis Cooper was also there. And there's a flag drop back at the 26-yard line. So the Colts are having Holding a problem escaping on the almost any play without a flag. Yeah, that's kind of disappointing because, you know, it's still early in the game. It's only 10 to nothing. And what can happen, like right here, is that you get a pretty good return out past the 30-yard line, get a little momentum going. Now a penalty drives them back, and now they have to go some 84 yards for a score, and that can be a little bit disheartening to the offense. Wide receivers on the set. Jack Trudeau, the quarterback. Play action fake to Bentley, and he goes deep down the left sideline into excellent coverage. Simmons, the intended receiver, but Kevin Ross just pinned him to the sideline and wouldn't let him go. Good coverage by Kevin Ross. And the two corners for Kansas City will do that to you all day. There's the difference between a rookie and a veteran. Right here, you'll see Stacy Simmons just does a standard move to the outside. Kevin Ross right now knows he's going up. Now watch what Kevin Ross does as he turns like this and look at his elbow come up. Right there, he's, he's already been out of bounds 10 yards. Even if he catches the ball, it's not going to count. That's the veteran versus the rookie right there. Kevin Ross does a great job of just taking Simmons completely out of the play. So it is second and 10 for the Colts, back at their own 16-yard line. And here is Bentley to the right side, and he is tipped up, and he's going to lose a couple of yards as Dan Saliamoa got him. <laughs> the cement mixer. Yes. <laughs> Great story two years ago. Mixing cement in Phoenix when he gets the call from Kansas City as a plan B free agent. Now he has played so well that he has moved Bill Moss, a two-time pro bowler from nose guard to defensive tackle. Pretty good quickness here by Salamua to run down from behind Albert Bentley. And at the end of the Saturday practice, he always leads the team in a Samoan war dance. And last year in Kansas City, he tried to teach it to me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he, he said, I give up. He says, you're not coordinated enough to do it. I'd have paid for that one. <laughs> I'd have paid to see that one. The Prince of Broadcasters, yes. Charlie Jones, with a lava lava, trying to do a Samoan down. Third and 12, four wide receivers over the middle. Pass is complete to Simmons. And it's going to be close to the first down as Dan Petrie made the tackle. That was a big tackle there because it appeared from our vantage point that he was easily going to have the first down, but it was a violent enough tackle to knock him down. It appears from here just a little bit short of the first down. Even, Moss putting the pressure on. Even though it wasn't the coverage he would have liked, right here you'll see, it looks like his momentum is going to take him way across the line. Right there, the right arm catches his neck and brings him back just short of the 26, which is where they had to get to for the first down. It, it is short. They made it by a nose. <laughs> it's the angle. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> For all the work from here, it looked like it was short. And so the Colts, with their first really bright hope since their opening drive, third down and 12, they convert to a first down at their own 26-yard line. That was a big play. Oh, really? <laughs> Again, four wide receivers for the coach. And we have whistles. 53 seconds is the time remaining in the first quarter. And the coach are going to be called for delay of game. This is something that we've been, we've been watching throughout the year as a difficulty. When do they go to the 25-second clock? The quarterback has to be aware of that. He takes a look and says, when does it start? Does it start after they have the measurement? Does it start whenever, when the measurement is off the field? When, the, you know, when, when exactly does that happen? In this case, it seemed to me that was an awfully fast 25 seconds. I agree with you. Oh, by the way, I meant to say Stacy was short. Not that the first uh, down was short. It's 5'9". That, that's what I meant. Not buying that's, that one. That's huh? the, no, but that's not a bad idea. Yeah. All right. First and 15. 
Pass is complete far side to Clarence Verdan. Verdan not expected to play as a wide receiver. He's been bothered by turf toe. But since Jesse Hester got that hit, Jesse is uh, nice walking along the sideline here about at the right 35-yard line. So he has not been back in the ballgame after he took that hit that, that stunned him momentarily. As the first quarter will come to a close. And Kansas City on top by a score of 10 to nothing. And we'll be back to the Hoosier Dome in just a moment. As we start the second quarter, it's Kansas City 10 and Indianapolis nothing. Let's check the ticker. Houston 14 to nothing. Jets leading Miami and Dallas on top of Tampa Bay. You know, Charlie, we've had a chance to see that Houston offense. We know that they can put points up in a hurry, and their defense isn't too bad. San Francisco's dug themselves a hole. Warren Moon has run for one touchdown, thrown for another. Seattle over New England, and Minnesota leaves Detroit. Uh, everybody had Minnesota winning the division. Right now they're one and three. They really need this game. New Orleans, Atlanta tied at the bottom. Look at that Pittsburgh in front of San Diego, and there's a big note. All right, first offensive touchdown for the Steelers this season. Brister threw the touchdown pass. And here it is, 10 nothing in Kansas City. Trudeau has nice protection, and a fumble. It is recovered by the Colts as Bentley picks it up and moves out to the 22-yard line, so he's going to salvage that play. Trudeau Neil was, Smith stripped him. Neil Smith made a great play there, but Trudeau is really struggling. Two interceptions and now this fumble, you'd have to say that he wasn't warmed up. I don't think that he was sweating when he came out of the locker room. Here you see the, this is a good, right here, strips the ball, gets his hand right on it, but Bentley does a good job of hustling around. Fortunately for the Colts, the others were pretty well blocked, so they weren't able to get the fumble here, and Bentley salvages a little bit of something. And when Trudeau stepped to his left, I thought he was going to have plenty of time to pass. And then Smith broke through. Third down and 13. The goal rolls out, and now he, they could call that grounding if they want to, and they will. Flags are down. That was really intentional grounding. There was nobody covered. Nobody open. Well, what happened in that situation also is they had the number of flags that are in the secondary indicate the fact that there are a lot of linemen downfield. The timing of the play got discombobulated, and as a result, I think he would have been a lot smarter to have at least thrown the ball in the air because when he threw it on the ground like that, it was clear to Bob McAwee that it was intentional grounding. If at least if it's in the air and goes out of bounds, he can't call that. Now they're going to lose the yardage, and they're going to lose the down. And it will be fourth down. Intentional grounding is accepted against number 10, loss of down. Illegal men downfield is declined, also against the offense. Charlie, we were talking to Ron Meyer yesterday about the possibility of whether or not Jeff George could play if he really is in that much pain. And the way Trudeau is playing, I'm, I'm, I would think that he would very much want to insert him fairly soon because he is really struggling early on with fumbles and interceptions. Uh, you know, intentional grounding. It looks like he just doesn't have it today, but George is, is in pain, and who knows whether or not he could come out and play because he took very few snaps during the week. Officials will move the ball to the line of scrimmage, which is the 23-yard line. And now they will mark the playoff from there. There you get a chance to see the franchise right there, Jeff George. It's tough learning on the job. Everybody harkens back to 1983 when Dan Marino was able to be successful as a rookie, and they figured, hey, it's easy to be a rookie quarterback in this league. Believe me, it is not. It is the most difficult position. I don't care how much money they're paying you. It ain't easy. So the line of scrimmage goes back to the 13. It's fourth and 23. Ron Stark, left-footed kicker. Now, remember, Kansas City puts a lot of pressure on the kickers, and he has had one block this year. And they're looking for number 29. Where is 29? There's pressure, he gets it off, but it's hurried. Naz Worthen takes it at the 50. Loses his footing, he comes down at the 45. He just got caught up in the turf. Sometimes they just grab your cleats and you lose your balance. We've got a timeout. Kansas City's got the lead, and we'll be back. And we'll be uncivilized. Let's go back to the punt. Right here, you get a chance to see Albert Lewis. He's the one that's been driving people crazy. He's going to come up here, and he's not going to block the punt. But what happens here is that as he comes, as he comes towards Stark, Stark is going to hurry his punt. 
Now, Ron Stark is somebody who has been averaging over 44 yards in his career, but here he hurries the punt. It's a 36-yard punt, four-yard return, only a 32-yard net, and that is something that is going to go well for Kansas City, and that's what a punt blocker can do. He can alter your system. And Kansas City has the ball at the 45-yard line of the Colts. First down. And here's Christian Okoye. And he's got a couple of yards on the play. It'll be second down and eight as Harvey Armstrong makes the tackle. Third time in the ballgame that Kansas City has been on offense, and all three times they have started in Colt territory at the 45 and at the Colt 20, and now again at the Colt 45. Pretty easy when you don't have to go, if you only have to go 40 and 30 yards for scores. That's exactly what the offense wants. The defense is always on its heels, wondering what's going to go next. And there's the graphic on possessions and the results. Both of those set up by interception. One by Percy Snow, the other by J.C. Pearson. The Berg sets up the pass is complete to Todd McNair. Now make a note of that play because that is a drop back pass. And he really uses that drop back pass inside of the Chiefs offensive uh, set only two or three times a ball game. And Steve DeBerg told us yesterday that if he was, if another quarterback in this system wouldn't like this because the drop back pass in their system is not a priority. They want to go to the run first, play action pass, and then drop back pass. But he says, as you mentioned at the outset, he is a systems guy and he's willing to deal with it. Fred Young made the tackle, it's third down and four. From the shotgun, here's the blitz. And he reads it, flags are down. The Chiefs have a first down, but we've got two markers. They're going to get both, both sets of holding, offense and defense. Ron Meyer, the head coach of the Colts, the record is one and three. Holding 65 offense, holding 25 defense, those penalties offset, replay the down. Frank Winters, the left guard for Kansas City. Cornell Holloway, the right corner, replacing Eugene Daniel, who's bothered by a knee injury. Even though the play doesn't count, that just shows the veteran generalship of DeBerg. He gets a chance to see that the blitz is coming. He sets his back foot and throws a strike to Manley. Manley makes a good side adjustment with the blitz, but it went for not. Now it's 35 again. And DeBerg tells us he has the entire offense available to him at the line of scrimmage. We can change any time to the entire offense. And the pass is complete for a first down at the 28-yard line as Emil Harry, his move receiver from Stanford, is the man who brought it in. And Chris Good in the nickel set for the Colts makes the stop. First down, Kansas City. This is a terrific throw right here. He takes his three steps, and he throws before Harry breaks. Right on the money right here, he turns around, and there's the ball. He cradles it. Maybe he didn't have to go down for it, but that's a terrific throw by DeBerg. A lot of times you practice that and practice that, but it doesn't, it doesn't happen. There it is that he throws without his looking. That just goes to show that the passing game for Kansas City has improved markedly over last year. And he had nice comments about individually all of the receivers and what they could do that was a little bit different from everybody else and what he could look for in certain situations when we talked to him yesterday. Hey, Charlie, if I'm leading the league in passing, I'm pretty magnanimous, too. And this pass is complete to Jonathan Hayes, the tight end who has just come off of the injured list. Alan Grant makes a tackle. You have to be impressed with the play calling here. Here's the counter boot, the misdirection that every single offense has in its arsenal. But it's not something that Kansas City uses that often. They use it sparingly, and as a result, it's very effective. As you mentioned, Jonathan Hayes and Alfredo Roberts are not necessarily pass catchers. But in situations like this, you can get them open downfield, get them the ball, and it's a surprise to the defense. And it goes for a gain of 12 to the Colts 16-yard line and a first down. And here's Okoye, fake to Okoye, and then he was going to come back and throw to Okoye, and it was knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And I tell you something, no, number 35, Christian Okoye, really carries out the fakes. John Hand is the man who knocked it away for the goal. Well, he's such a big man, too. It's six foot one and some 260 pounds close to the ground. This is almost an ideal fullback. Here's somebody that, you know, just continues to, to bother defenses. This is somebody you have to concentrate on right there. 
the play action fake he got to figure oh there it is right here good vertical jump here by hand to bat it down second down and 10 the ball of the coach 16 yard line Okoye the remaining back and an audible here by DeBerg and he stumbles coming out and he's going to be down at that point you know what's funny about that, Charlie? It's just what, embarrassing. Well, it, it, it's not funny about DeBerg. What's funny is on the defensive side, you'll see that, hey, there's a cheap sack. You know, <laughs> everybody see, gets all of a sudden, it. everyone will be scrambling for it. Watch this all of a sudden. Get it, you'll get a chance to look at Fred Young coming in. Now watch. There he's on the ground. Holy cow. Whoa, who's going to get there first? Me, 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 me. And it's Jeff Harad that's able to get there first to make the play. And the ball goes back to the 21, a loss of five. It'll be third down and 15. And they say players don't care about their stats. <laughs> <laughs> and now the crowd begins to get into it. Kansas City 10, the Colts nothing. 10-20, time remaining first half. And here's the blip. And it's picked up. Good for Texas throwing this away. The Colts' defense was coming, but their secondary had a blanket coverage over everybody. DeBerg was out of time. That clock in his head that goes ticky, 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 and it run out of time, and he got rid of it. Well, the reason you see that DeBerg is angry right here is one of the receivers to the left has to see the blitz. The man who is covering him comes off the side in this case, and he's got to know that instead of running a post, he's got to run an in or a hook because he knows that DeBerg is not going to have the time with the blitz. The corner came off in the blitz, and the receiver didn't make the adjustment, and DeBerg wisely threw it away. And a 39-yard field goal attempt by Nick Lowry. He has already hit from 37 in the ball game. It was first quarter going in the other direction. And this one is good from 39 yards out. And so Kansas City stretches the margin. It's the Chiefs, 13, and the Colts, nothing. We'll be back with a kickoff. We are back to the Hoosier Dome as Nick Lowry kicks off. And at the four-yard line, Alan Grant is the return man. To the 15, has an opening to 20. And returns to the 24-yard line, a return of 20 yards. Total offense thus far, Kansas City 91 yards. The Colts 35, almost 3-1. to one. But still, Donaldson and Petrie with the tackle. I was going to say, there's still only two touchdowns down. That You're right, they have been severely outplayed. But fortunately for them, the defense really has risen to the occasion, held Kansas City twice to field goals. So even though it is 13-0, it doesn't look too good statistically. Hey, the Colts are still in the game. Trudeau to throw. And the pass is incomplete. They're going to call pass interference. Bill Brooks, the intended receiver, Percy Snow. I thought he got there about the time the football did. The official said he got there before the football did. Hey, Charlie, here's a classic case of, of, the, of the crowd making the call. You know, you pass see a little bit of collision. 59 defense, first down. We won't be able to catch it on the replay necessarily because you can't hear it. But there's a collision, the crowd ooze, and all of a sudden there's a big pregnant pause and the flag comes flying out. Don't tell me that the officials aren't influenced by the, by the crowd. Right here, uh, the it's awfully close. What the official on this side sees is number 59's right hand getting in there a little bit early. And those, of course... Those big arms reaching around. And, and much like on an umpire, they want the call right now. They don't want to wait three, four, five seconds because that indicates indecision on the part of the officials and that's something the crowd will definitely jump on. And it's a first down at the 29-yard line. And here is Bentley, back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Now let's go to New York, and it up there. Charlie, with 14.02 to play in the second quarter at Three Rivers, the long drought is over for the Steelers. Their first offensive touchdown of the year, it's Bubby Brister to Eric Green. They hadn't scored a TD on offense in nine months since last January in the divisional playoff at Denver. In football terms, they went four hours, 46 minutes, and 24 seconds before visiting the end zone. Charles? And Bob, it's good to hear your voice. We were looking for another biff bam <laughs> from Paul McGuire. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it ironic that the touchdown that was scored there, Bubby Brister is to the guy that held out all of preseason. And Chuck Knoll said, oh, this guy's held out all preseason. He can't help us any. There's no way he's going to. He ends up scoring the first offensive touchdown of five games. And he breaks the drought. An operative we, clock problem. We have a clock problem here. And so we're checking at one end and then checking at the other. Every year it seems like we have a situation, whether it be a holdout or whether it be somebody negotiating his contract. 
Please reset the game clock which to 9, 3, 4. Which proves the lack of validity in terms of, of, in terms of the training camp. I remember one year Dan Fouts held out into the fourth game of the season. Showed up on a Thursday and that Sunday threw for four touchdown passes and a 31 to 28 win. It's time to condense that sucker. And now the clocks have all been reset. 9.34 left to go in the first half. Kansas City 13, the Colts nothing. And it is a second down and nine. As Indianapolis did pick up a yard on the last play. Complete. Bentley, the intended receiver. Trudeau continues to struggle as the front seven, that was Mike Bell, I believe, got a hand on it. And the secondary is exit coverage for Kansas City, so his work is really cut out for him. Right here, you're going to say, why didn't why didn't he catch this ball? It's right in his hands. Well, he's anticipating the ball getting there just a little bit faster. Now, right there, he's up in the air, and it's discombobulated. Between his feet and the ground, all of a sudden, the timing is thrown off. And it hits the heels of his hands, and he isn't able to make the catch. But even if he does, it's only a two-yard game. So it's third down and nine, four wide receivers for the coach. <laughs> Trudeau wants to go deep, and now he comes back underneath the coverage. In reality, he was throwing the ball away. Stanley Morgan, the closest receiver, it will be fourth down. And now the saga of the kicker, Ron Stark, against... Albert Lewis, number 29 for Kansas City. As Charlie, he is the man that puts the pressure on the putter. Charlie, that was a situation which, I, frankly, I don't understand. You had three wide receivers running 30-yard routes. I understand you want to get the ball down the field, but you got to have somebody in the intermediate zone. And Albert Lewis is right over the offensive left guard. Watch how quick Stark gets it off here. Lewis does a little loop, but he's picked up. He gets a good one off. Naz Worthen. And he has dropped in his tracks. There's a flag down. It's going to go against Kansas City. Excellent coverage by Michael Ball. And he got behind a chief, a 48-yard catch. I think what they're going to say in this situation is that Naz Worthen is somebody that called for the fair catch. They're going to call an illegal signal. Evidently, he might have just been shielding his eyes. But Locking either way. in the back. Number 24 on the receiving team. After the ball was kicked, post possession, 10 yards. It's on Pearson, the defender coming down on the special teams, got a step on him, and he pushed him in the back. We've got a timeout. Kansas City has the ball, and they've got the lead, 13 to nothing. Kansas City with a first down at their own 10-yard line. First time the Chiefs have been in their own territory in the first half. And here is Barry Word, the ball carrier. Koye taking a little breather. Let's go back and look at the penalty on that punt. Up on the left side of your screen, you're going to get a chance to see J.C. Pearson just have a little bit of a push in the back in this situation. Uh, Mitchell, Michael Ball, rather, is able to get past him. And right there, he just pushes him just enough to knock him off stride. But it isn't really that big of a clip. But that's what the official sees, and so he calls it. Great Mike, play. Michael Ball, though, really had position on Pearson. J.C. let him get behind him. And he figured he was at a, a straight bead on uh, Naz Worthen. He'd rather push him than have him take a uh, clean shot at him. Play action fake. The bird's in trouble. He's sacked. Banks got him. Actually, in this situation, you're going to see the penetration is made by John Hand in the middle. Good play fake right here, and he bumps off two people. Right there, he's got DeBerg by the ankle, but he can't finish him. There, Chip Banks goes airborne to knock him down. That's what made Chip Banks famous in the middle 80s right here. He's able to take on a back, and he defeats him, even though Jones is a pretty good blocker. Jumps over Hand and helps him get the sack. And with the ball at the two-yard line. The third down and 18. DeBerg fires out of the end zone. It is dropped at the five-yard line. This is going to give the Colts a chance to get some good field position here in case they don't get a good punt. If Verdan can get a good run back, they'll be inside the 50. 
And also remember the line of scrimmage is the two. And so rather than being 15 yards back, Ryan Barker with his first punt will only be about 11 yards, 11 and a half yards back, and you'll have to watch the back edge of the end zone as you look at that pass that was incomplete. And you know, Charlie, one of the situations here, too, is people say, why don't you go for the block in this situation because it is only 12 yards. Because they have to be so bunched in and cognizant of the fact that they have to protect the punter, this is a good chance to set up a return. They can get a good return here with Verdan if Barker is forced to kick a low kick. And if we pull back just a little, you can see how close he is to that back line. Good kick. It's not going to count, though. Verdan is the return man. Clarence Verdan, who is the best return man for the coach. He's been bothered by a turf toe, but has a chance now to really shine. And Charlie, this is only Barker's second professional game. He replaced Kelly Goodburn, who was having not one of his better seasons. As a result, he was waived. Last week was his first time around, and he didn't even average 38 yards a kick, so he's got to be frustrated by that howitzer. He just hit the one over 60 yards. It doesn't count. It's another good one. It hangs up for Dan. Takes it at the 50-yard line. Excellent coverage by Kansas City Special Teams once again. And he gets only two, maybe three yards on the return of 50-yard kick. Now let's take a look at the uh, headlines in NFL Live. Patriots tight end says the polygraph test about his involvement in the locker room event shows that he was truthful. Boston sports writer said that she has received death threats and will leave the country temporarily. And Will McDonough says with Bo Jackson's return next week, Marcus Allen may be traded to the Rams. Oh, they had an exciting show today, didn't I'm they? I'm telling you, it was, it was full of things. And they have, they have even more for you at halftime. First down to the Kansas City 48-yard line. Trudeau's pass is on target to the 42-yard line of Kansas City. And some words are exchanged with Stanley Morgan. Charlie, this is one of the things that I don't like. This is something that should be called. Here's a situation where Stanley Morgan makes the catch. He plows in for some extra yardage. Here's big, bad Stanley Morgan, all 180 pounds of him. Now watch here. He's going to run a standard hook route. He's going to make the catch right here and then turn up field. This is all the yardage he's going to get as he turns into Percy Snow. Now right here he's down. He's stopped. Now what? this is unnecessary as he pulls on the head and comes over to make the hit on it, both Hackett and Snow. That's something that very easily could have been called a penalty. Second down. Flag is down. Trudeau has the first down. He will go to the 27 yard line but there was a flag on the floor. Kevin Ross with the tackle. Bob Mack, we called it right away, holding on the Colts, but there's more than one flag. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face. Number 71 offense. Ten yards, second down. That's Thank Kevin Call. Offside, defense, penalties offset, replay the down. At this point in the season, the Colts have now been outscored in the first half, 64 points to 20. Well, Charlie, they're also giving up close to 369 yards a game, which is 28 in the National Football League. And last I checked, I think there are only 28 teams. Unless NFL Live has another scoop for us. That's right. <laughs> Expansion. We don't know anything about it. <laughs> Second down and four. The ball at the 42-yard line of Kansas City. Colts with four wide receivers. And he come inside to Bentley. And he fights his way to the 33. Gain of nine. First down. Good play. And that could have been a lot better play, too. They had a little bit of misdirection there on the handoff. And if Bentley doesn't run into the back of Zephyrus Moss, this could be a lot bigger play. Watch Moss here cut inside on Burris right here. If he can just wait, let him block instead of running into him. Burris gets stuffed there, and if he can just wait, just wait that little bit. You're so excited and you want to run fast. If he hesitates, let Moss make the block. He'd have had another 10 yards. Again, four wide receivers for the coach. Jesse Hester is not in the ball game. has not come back after he was nailed early in the, in the first half. And here's Bill Brooks. To the 23, close to the first down. Burris and Lewis make the tackle. 
I like what Larry Cannon is doing here right now, Charlie. What he's doing is he's attacking the zones. He realizes, hey, Trudeau, don't try to throw the ball up. Forget these 30-yard routes right here. First to Stanley Morgan, and now once again underneath the Billy Brooks. A lot of seams in that zone, and Trudeau is now finding the spots. And the change will come out for the measurement. 5.37, time remaining second quarter. I'm not going to guess whether or not this is a first down or not. I don't want to embarrass myself. Oh, go ahead. go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to say first down. First down. Oops. Led you into that one, didn't I? It is a first down. See how the camera angle can, can throw you off? Hey, well, you know what? Boston could use me. I'm batting which, 500. Which way did you take? <laughs> I can't remember. I went the other way. First down at the Kansas City 23-yard line. Chiefs lead it 13 to nothing. Coach with four wide receivers. Brooks, Morgan, Verdan, and Simmons. He's got to hurry. He's running out of... Just made the clock. Just barely. Bentley straight shot up the middle to the 12. That's what the passing game will do for you right now. A couple of completions, and that opens things up. They try to come in the pass rush a little bit. Nice block inside by Baldinger. Open up the hole for Albert Bentley. Three first downs in a row. To the 33, the 23, and the 12. Bentley now eight rushes for 33 yards. One reception for four. 37 yards total off him. Trudeau over the middle. Pass is complete. Stacey Simmons, six-yard line. Chris Martin with a tackle. Okay, I mentioned earlier that Stacey Simmons was short. There's a reason for that. Watch the pivot he's able to make right here at the five-yard line. He catches the ball on what's called a delay. He lets the inside receiver run deep, clear out, and then he's going to come underneath on the delay. Trudeau, once again, not taking too many chances. Sees him cutting out right here. A little 360. Now, if you're six foot three, you don't make this play. Look at that. Right underneath. Great move there. Nothing like having that great center of gravity to get open. There's the delay underneath. They're in a zone right there. You see the cornerback doesn't go with him. They cut him back to the inside. Right underneath Derek Thomas. Is he, he's able to stay on his feet. Nice play by the rookie. Second and four at the six-yard line. Hit from behind by Derek Thomas. And the first time that Thomas has really made an impact in the game, he reached around Trudeau, slapped the ball out of his hands. But it's recovered by the coach. Moss has been doing a good job on Thomas, but right here, whether or not it's Trudeau's a little bit too far back or Moss takes the wrong angle, Thomas is able to cut through. Now, actually, this is a very athletic play right here. Very rarely does the quarterback get his own fumble. And right there, Trudeau is heads up enough to do just Number that. One. And the ball goes back to the 10-yard line, where it will be third down at the 10. Third down and eight. We've got a timeout by the Indianapolis Colts. Stopping the clock with 3.29. Time remaining here in the second quarter in Kansas City on top by a score of 13 to nothing. This is a crucial situation here. You know, they've been driving. This is obviously their best drive of the half, and they want to come away with points. But since it's taken them so long here, uh, they would very much like to get seven. You know, if they go down 10, it isn't quite the same as getting seven because they get, if they were to score a touchdown here, they can get the crowd into the game, and that's something that they need at this point. All right, let's check the ticker. Houston in front of San Francisco by seven. The Jets on top of Miami, and Dallas leads Tampa Bay. Well, that Jets score is very surprising. Now the Jets are two and two, spanking Miami. Miami having a little bit of a letdown after last week's big win. Seattle big over New England. Minnesota now three over Detroit. He's got to do a lot of confidence for Norm Johnson. He struggled throughout the season, but he's got two field goals in that game against the Patriots. But he didn't miss an extra point. That's right. The good and the bad. Pittsburgh. Ooh, by 10, New Orleans, Atlanta tied. And then two touchdowns to the guy we talked about earlier, the erstwhile holdout, Eric Green. Obviously, he's fitting into the system quite well, I'd say. And here the score is Kansas City 13 and Indianapolis nothing, with 3.29 left to go in the first half. Nick Lowry opened the scoring with a 37-yard field goal, and then the Chiefs followed with a touchdown from DeBerg to Thomas at 21 yards, both of those following turnovers Interceptions by Percy Snow and J.C. Pearson. And then a 39-yard field goal by Nick Lowry. That has been the scoring. Kansas City 13, Colts nothing. And the first time that the Colts 
have had a major threat in the first half. And they have the ball third down and eight at the Kansas City 10-yard line. Charlie, if this drive has done nothing else, it's reestablished Trudeau's confidence in himself. I was sure in the first three drives, which were stymied by two, uh, by a grounding penalty, two interceptions, that he had to be a little, had a little soul-searching there on the sidelines. But now I think he's a little more self-assured. I think he's feeling a lot better about himself. from the backside again and again it is Derek Thomas second time in a row that Thomas with that great quickness made his presence felt one of the things great pass rushers do is they anticipate the count watch how quick he gets off here and takes the angle to the outside he's taking the same move but for some reason Moss hasn't been able to figure it out right there he does the right thing goes in and hammers him for the loss Moss is going to have to adjust a little. He's going to have to step a little bit to the outside because Derek Thomas has yet to beat him to the inside. The outside rushes his forte, and he's just got to take that away from him. 38-yard field goal attempt by Dean Biosuchi. And it is good from 38 yards out. And so the Colts are on the scoreboard. It's Kansas City 13, Indianapolis 3. We'll be back in a moment. Works wonders. Biasucci is kicked off. Naz Worthen at the one-yard line. Slips the tackle. A flag is down. And Naz goes down at about the 25. And we'll check out the flag. Alan Grant makes the tackle for the coach. And the call will go against Kansas City. Very seldom do we see a kickoff without that call. Yeah. Illegal block in the back. Number 82. On the return. Half the distance. First down. But once again, one of the great names in football, Nasrallah. I love that name. Nasrallah Wirtha. Now the crowd begins to get into it here. Kansas City with the ball on their own nine. What happens right there is you see him stumble, and 52 is just going to fall right on top of him, and that's something that the official sees. Pushing him over. Uh, I don't know about that. He trips over him as he's going down, and he gets the push anyway. Should have let it go. No brainer. Double tied in on the set. That's Roberts in motion. Is Christian McCoy back in the lineup? And he goes out to about the 12. He'll pick up three on the play. Fred Young makes the tackle. Speaking of Fred Young, number 56 of the coach. When you were with Dallas, he was at Woodrow Wilson High School. Oh, I man. used to come out, look out the window, and watch you work out. I knew you were going to bring of that course. up. That's great. And here he is. He's old on his team, for goodness sake. <laughs> and when I was a rookie in Dallas, sure enough, I used to work out over to his junior high school boy to point that out to me. And he was kind enough to point it out to us yesterday, too. <laughs> Second down and seven. McCoye. And he'll have two yards to the 14. Thompson and Armstrong make the tackle. And now the two-minute warning will be given to both benches. Two minutes left in the first half. Kansas City 13, Colts 3, back in a moment. Welcome back to the Hoosier Dome, where Kansas City leads Indianapolis by 10, 13 to 3, with two minutes to go in the first half. Be sure to be with us at halftime for NFL Live. Bob Costas, Will McDonough, and O.J. Simpson. The story behind the stories, all the figures, facts, and photo from the first half. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I do. That you did bad. that well. Kind of a little alliteration. Yeah. Uh, and the second half of the doubleheader, the Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Rams. So be sure to stay tuned for that one. That should be a good one. Yeah, Boomer and Everett. You know, Cincinnati. What are you liking that ballgame? Well, you know, this is a very peculiar situation here. Because of the playoffs, uh, Cincinnati had to change their game to the Astrodome. And so they have five straight games on the road. That's tough. But late in the season. They get Houston at home, which could make a difference. Good point. Who do you like in that game? I don't know. The Rams really have to win this one. Plus, they're at home. I have to like them. And they've had an intercepted. The Colts have the ball. Chris Good, first time this year that DeBerg has been intercepted. Charlie, that was really a costly interception, too, deep in your own territory on the 14-yard line. That is very un-DeBerg-like. Great interception there. Nice catch by Chris Good in this situation. 
He's looking out. He all he wants is an out route here, just enough to get the first down. He throws off his back foot, and a great diving catch there by Good. I don't know if they're going to replay that or not, but if I was the Colts, I'd hurry up to the line of scrimmage and get it. There's no doubt in my mind that he caught it. Take a look. He throws it off his back foot here, Charlie. He's trying to avoid the rush, and right there, Good makes the dive and makes the catch. DeBerg hustles over to try to make the play, but Harry prevents the touchdown. DeBerg can't be too happy with himself. As you mentioned, the first interception of the season, but really a costly one. 133 attempts before that interception, and now they'll review it. After further review, the play stands. First down. All right. All during the year, we've been talking about the fact that we've been complaining about the review, not making the two-minute standard. It did this time. I want to go on record that I said it. It made it into the two minutes. Way to go. And the first down of the Kansas City 9, 153 left to go first half. And the Colts are right back in the middle of it. Play action. Trudeau rolls right. Drops it to Bentley at the 5. And Bentley's going to go to the one. Or is he going to go in or not? Boy, is he strong. He, he is really impressive. Well, he got tackled on the three-yard line. It's a face mask penalty is what it is. What a great effort by Albert Bentley on the misdirection. For a minute there, it looked like a naked bootleg, and Trudeau was going to go on his own. That's a terrific call. You know what happens, Charlie? You're on the nine-yard line. You've got some momentum going. The worst thing you can do is hand off to the fullback and get stuck for a yard gain. Here you see the misdirection. You'll see Bentley come underneath. That's Derek Thomas's man. He's able to escape him. But watch right here. Donaldson stuffs him right there in the five-yard line. Look how strong he is. Two guys grab his face mask, and he gets the ball over for the touchdown. What an effort by Bentley. Watch this. Right on the five-yard line, he sticks him. He lowers his shoulder, keeps his legs going. And right here, Hackett's going to come across, too, along with Donaldson. Gets the ball over. That's a terrific effort by Bentley. And the officials have taken a timeout. And the one thing that you notice on the first replay, and we'll take another look at that, that Bentley did, all you've got to do is break the plane of the goal with the football while you are inbound. Watch Bentley come underneath. Derek Thomas has him in coverage. Right there, he knows he's beat. Bentley's going to catch the ball and hit up field. Now, right here, you figure, yeah, he's going to, his momentum's going to go to the four-yard line. Got his face mask. Hack it two, and right there, look at the strength. He's not out of bounds. His feet are still there. Yes. That's a touchdown. Great effort. On that occasion, oh, I know you're going to hate me for this. Right. Bentley ran like a Mack truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, Bentley, review, the play stands. Bentley That's ran that. like a Bentley is what he did. Look at his feet right yeah. there. His feet are still on the green part of the, of the turf. Great effort by Albert Bentley. Got to be excited for him. And a big play for the Colts. And Biasucci will now attempt the point after. Kansas City 13, the Colts 10, 147 left in the first half, and it was Chris Good and the interception that set it up. Kick off your night on NBC with the new drama series Hull High, and don't miss the critically acclaimed new series Life Stories tonight. The show looks at the first 48 minutes of a heart attack in real time, an extraordinary story. Life Stories also has the McMillions number tonight. Then best-selling author Jackie Collins brings her spectacular characters to life in an NBC World premiere, Jackie Collins' Lucky Chances, beginning tonight only on NBC. And speaking of lucky chances, the Colts did just that. With the interception, the touchdown, they pull within three. And that, the horse you saw, the Colts' coat, well, that's real Mac. An Arabian Stallion. They wanted to call him Big Mac, but they were afraid because of the suit. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't do taken. that. Actually, it wasn't luck, Charlie. Two great plays. The great interception by Good, and right here, a tremendous effort by Bentley. Pushing himself over right there, the feet inbounds. Terrific effort. And great hands, too, because a lot of times when you try to do that, you fumble. What's the headband for, by the way? It's not like he has long hair or anything. What? I don't understand no, it's that. Your hair, after you take the helmet off so that your hair doesn't get mashed down. Oh, okay. Because sure. he knows it's on TV. Of course. All right. Dean Biasucci kicking off, and he nails this one. 
Worthen will down it five yards deep in the end zone. And Kansas City has the ball at their own 20 first down. Charlie, with a minute 47 left in the half, it's not as if Kansas City needs to sit on the ball. They might want to take some chances here. And it'll be interesting to see how DeBerg is going to do with what is it going to be in this case, flush or crush offense? Well, it's crush if Okoye is in there, and it's flush if they go to four wide receivers and he's not in there. Okay. I guess it's flush. And it's a shotgun. All right. A flush shotgun. Interesting terminology. And the bird is set. Clancy and Thompson will split that side. Donald Thompson does a good job here. Right inside, he's got kind of a double team there, and Lutz has a hold of him. Looks like he's going to tackle him, but he's so strong, he's able to get out of it. Great effort there by Thompson, frustrating Lutz. Now look for them possibly to just run a draw play now that they're on their own 10-yard line. And it's second and 20. Four-man rush by the coach. The pass is oh, complete. No. Yes. Emil Harry breaks the big play. Out to the 43-yard line. That showed a lot of guts on the part of DeBerg there. He stood in there and took a real shot. Laid the ball right in there to Emil Harry. I'm surprised at this coverage. Of, you know, we've mentioned at the outset that there are a lot of rookies and free agents in the secondary, but they, they're playing way too loose in that situation. That's a big game. Watch the hit that DeBerg takes here. Showing a lot of courage. Standing right in there. Bang! Takes the hit from hand, but delivers it right on the money to Harry. And a gain of 33. Pressure again. And the pass is complete to Rob Thomas, who goes up and pulls it down, and then he is pulled down by Michael Ball. This is a masterful job by DeBerg right here. Again, he takes the pressure, and this is something that comes with the savvy of being in the league 14 years. A lot of times, young quarterbacks will get the happy feet when they see the rush coming on them, and in this case, Harad comes up the middle on a blitz, has him right in his sights, and he's still able to deliver with a touch. Second and one at the 48-yard line of the Colts. Again, a four-man rush over the middle. All alone is Todd McNair, and he goes out of bounds, stops the clock, 35-yard line, and he's got the first down. Now, remember, just a moment ago, it was second and 20 back at the Chiefs' 10. Well, Steve DeBerg continues to show the savvy of a 14-year veteran right here. But, of course, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I, I don't know what's happening in the secondary. There's no way that the back should be able to get him 15 yards down the middle of the field. And here's the draw. McNair to the 26-yard line. He's got nine. It'll be second down and one. And Kansas City will take a timeout, stopping the clock. Jeff Harad with that last tackle. Tackle. Harad coming off of a pelvic injury. He's missed the last two ball games. And now the conference on the sideline. That might have been the fastest 65 yards I've ever seen. Ooh. Just as you say, they started the 10-yard line. Now the drop play, they're down to the nearly the 25-yard line, the 26, with two timeouts remaining. Plenty of time to get a score in this situation. Did we make a note of the time that this drive started? And we did. 147. And there's now 101. So 46 seconds on the game clock. That's all that has expired in this drive. Well, he's... He's definitely exploiting the young secondary of the Colts in that situation. Once again, you're going to see that DeBerg takes another big hit from the backside. Hand once again getting in there, and Banks as well. DeBerg looks like he's in a little bit of pain there with his left wrist, but he keeps going. He doesn't want to get out there while a good thing is going his way. And this is one of the advantages that he has, because when he told us, we mentioned earlier, he has the entire offense at his call right now. So he can look at the defense, and he can change to any play they have. Stands in the pocket, throws the pass into coverage, and is caught at the 26-yard line. It will not be a first down. Pete Manley with the reception, Jeff Arad with the tackle, and very quickly, here come the Chiefs again. That was strange. They had second and one, and the completion doesn't get them a first down. So it's third down and one. 40 seconds in counting. Time remaining. First down. And we have movement, and it will go against Kansas City as John Alt step back. Charlie, I've been complimenting Steve DeBerg and the great job he's been doing in getting him down the field. 
But in that situation, when you have a third and one, come All out in a regular formation. You've got a big stud like a Koye to get you the first down. You call a timeout, and then you're there with four plays inside the 20-yard line. Now they find themselves in a position where they have third and six. You're going to chance to see left tackle John Alt here rock a little bit, and right there, you got to call it. Chip Banks does a good job of intimidating him offsides, and now instead of third and one, they got third and six. But in the behalf of the quarterback, Steve DeBerg, he does not have a Koye in the ballgame. Yeah, but even so, you've got third less than a yard. McNair's no stiff. He's, he can get you that much, can he? Third down and six. Clean blitz from the far side. DeBerg reads it, passes, complete inside the 10-yard line, Pete Manley. But Michael Ball had a clear shot at DeBerg. He saw him coming, read the blitz, went to the hot receiver, and DeBerg is down. He is really hurting. DeBerg is showing an awful lot of courage right here. He saw Michael Ball coming. And it's exactly what he was supposed to do. The man that Michael Ball left was Pete Manley. Pete Manley slants, and they get a big play. 22 yards. He knows it's coming. Here he sees him right in front of him, and he lays oh. it in, takes the shot. He knows it's coming. That shows a lot of courage on the part of DeBerg. Watch yeah. right there. You see him cutting underneath. Right there, there's nobody left. And that, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a pick by Rob Thomas that they didn't see. But if they don't see it, it's a good play. Manley makes the play, cuts inside the 10. First down for the Chiefs. But I can't say enough about DeBerg. You know, I mean, you don't, re you know, when you're 36, 37 years of age and you're taking those kind of hits, you don't requ recover quite so quickly. But look at the intelligence that he had. After he's hit, he's laying there semi-conscious, and he gets up quick enough to tell the official to stop the clock with 20 seconds left. Ouch. Head hits the turf like that. That's some pain. And also you notice that Michael Ball knew that he was hurt, and he was signaling for the trainer for Kansas City to come over. But look at that. He didn't want to, he didn't want to admit it. He gets back up. On this drive, DeBerg, 5 of 5, 77 yards. And is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Donnell Thompson gets the hand up. Second down and goal to go at the 9. Now, I don't know whether they're in such a hurry because the pass is incomplete and the clock has stopped. Steve here should get him in the huddle and tell him what he wants to do for the next two plays. The clock, he's actually, now he does move, but even if he doesn't move, his right leg is so far in the backfield that they could call him for being in the backfield and call that penalty. And as I say, Irv even hasn't played until just now, and so he's obviously not fresh. Second and goal at the 14. Pass is complete at the five-yard line to Pete Manley, and a flag is down. Dropped at the 10-yard line on the far side. Pete Manley seems pretty confident that it was defensive holding in that situation against Holloway. Oh, no. It is against Kansas City again. And Manley is screaming. He can't believe it. He took his helmet off. Now he's going to go get a piece. Look at that. He wants a piece of that official. He can't believe it. What? Moi? He's inciting the crowd against him. But That's evidently... interference. 89 offense. 10-yard penalty. They're going to call him for pushing off. What will happen here is on a delay pattern, if he has it man for man, he's going to come upfield. Now, he has to come underneath. Now, watch what happens. Okay, he pushes him right here. They both are locked like this. Now, they're both locked there. I, I don't know how he's going to call that offense in that situation because both people have their hands out. So the ball is now back to the Colt 24-yard line, 11 seconds left in the first half and his second down and go. Once again, DeBerg takes a big shot and able to complete the pass. And here is the draw. And Todd McNair is stuck at the 26. This is interesting. You weren't able to see this. You weren't able to see this on your screen, but DeBerg shows once again that he knows that he's in command on the field. He, he gets tackled, the clock is running, and everybody's saying, the clock's going to run out, the clock's going to run out. He stands right next to the official, lets the clock tick down to two seconds because he does not want to give the other team another play. And he knows that he has the confidence of a kicker like Lowry who's going to come on and make the play, even though it may not be the exact hash mark he likes. Nick Lowry now is 9 for 10 this season. And Lowry in this ball game is hit from the 37 and the 39. And it will be an attempt of 44 yards. 
Lowry's longest to date this year is 43. And he is hit from 58, so it's well within his range. And it is up, and it is good. From 44 yards away. So Nick Lowry is three for three in the ball game. And the score at halftime is Kansas City 16 and the Colts 10. We'll be right back into these messages from the NFL and your local. What's your thoughts on the Chiefs and the Colts? Well, the big story with the Chiefs is Steve DeBerg, the quarterback. You know, I played with Steve DeBerg, and historically, he had a rap on him. No matter how well he played in the game, he would do something late in the game to, to hurt you. Well, the day he threw an interception, his first interception of the season, it led to the Colts' touchdown. But if he could post those kind of numbers, the second half of the season, one, touch, one interception, I should say, in five games, this Chiefs team is going to be real tough to beat. Now, you played with him at San Francisco in yeah. 1979. Right? Yeah, and he broke a record that year, believe it or not. It was Bill Walsh's first year, and he broke a record uh, most completions in the season. But he would still do something late in the game, fumble the ball, fall down, throw an interception, and that's one of the reasons uh, Bill Walsh decided to move him on and bring uh, Joe Montana up. Well, he's certainly thriving to this point under Marty Schottenheimer. Yeah, well, the big knock on him was the interceptions. You know, Bill Walsh would be the first to tell you that Steve was such a competitive. He's a very competitive guy. He wouldn't take no for an answer on a pass play. He'd never just throw the ball away. So he would always try to force everything in there. It doesn't look as though he's doing that now this year with the Chiefs. He's trying to take what they're giving him. You know what really helps him, too? Play action. you got to respect Okoya. You know, you make the fake to him, you roll out a little bit, it freezes that defense for a while, gives you a little bit more time, and you can be more selective. Okay, so there's the score. Kansas City 16 and Indianapolis 10 at the half. Now, speaking of the 49ers, how about this? In the third quarter at the Astrodome, Houston, on a pair of first-quarter TDs, a one-yard run by Warren Moon and a 30-yard Moon to Drew Hill touchdown, leading 14-7. to In the second quarter, Montana hit Jerry Rice from seven yards out, but the Niners are down by one score. The Jets are playing Miami at Joe Robbie Stadium. Miami just scored, then missed the extra point. They trail 13 to 6 on an 85 degree day. Now this is some first half action in the second quarter. Ken O'Brien will find the rookie out of Syracuse, Rob Moore. The play action fake completely confuses the Miami defense. This play covers 43 yards, sets up the following touchdown, which was scored by Moore off the pass from O'Brien. This one covers nine yards, and the Jets at that point had a lead of 10 to nothing, which Pat Leahy extended to 13-0 with a field goal. And Miami tried to cut into it just before the half ended. Here's Sammy Smith on the half's last play, tries to go over the top, and the Jets cut him down and deny him. Then Mark Logan did score from 11 yards out early in the third quarter, but they missed the extra point, so the Dolphins still trail the Jets by a score of 13 to 6. Tampa Bay is playing at Dallas. The Bucks are 3 and 1. The Cowboys are 1 and 3, and the Cowboys on a Troy Aikman touchdown pass in the first quarter still lead in the third, 7 to 3. Seattle and New England. This is a wild one in that Seattle was in front by a score of 19 to 3 before the Patriots made their move. Brent Williams recovered a fumble and ran it back 44 yards for a touchdown just before halftime. Then Mark Wilson just threw a 35-yarder to Hartley Dykes and just like that the Patriots are back in it in a battle of one and three teams in Foxborough. Seattle 19 and the Patriots 17. Detroit is playing at Minnesota in an NFC Central matchup. Rich Gannon has touchdown passes to Hassan Jones and Anthony Carter. Both teams are one and three. The Vikings lead the Lions 20 to 10. San Diego is at Pittsburgh. We'll take a look at some highlights as the long drought finally ends for the Steelers. There's their beleaguered offensive coordinator Joe Walton, the former Jet head coach talking it over with Bubby Brister. It was San Diego that scored first. Billy Joe Tolliver throwing a touchdown pass to Gary Plummer. You see, he wears number 50. He's usually a linebacker. That was his first offensive play of the year, and he got the TD. And here's the first offensive touchdown of the season in Game 5 for Pittsburgh. Eric Green, the holdout number one pick, the tight end, scores on the 8-yarder from Brister. Noel and uh, Walton heave a sigh of relief. And then additional reason to smile about eight minutes later, the same combination. And there's the smile creasing the face of Joe Walton. Brister to Green yet again. And then early in the third quarter, they drove for another TD. Warren Williams from two yards out. They have the lead 24-7. Both these clubs are one and three. Pittsburgh, prior to today, had not scored an offensive touchdown since the second quarter of their January divisional playoff game against the Broncos at Mile High Stadium. 
New Orleans and Atlanta have gone to the half. Now they move to the third quarter at the Superdome. A Morton Anderson field goal is the difference. The Saints with the lead at 17 to 14. Now on to other news. We'll give you a look at the visitors' American League batting title. Welcome back to the Hoosier Dome. I'm Charlie Jones along with Todd Christensen. Kansas City leading at halftime by six. Let's go back now and review the first half. Well, Rob Thomas makes a fabulous catch here in the first half. You know, to get a touchdown, it appeared for all the world like Michael Ball was going to make an interception. DeBerg gets plenty of time here as he fades back. And the coverage for once for the Colts was pretty good. As, as we mentioned, you know, they have a lot of free agents and rookies back there. Michael Ball jumps, but Thomas gets a little bit higher and gets into the end zone on a nice 360 move there. However, I really think the play of the game is the Colts touchdown. Albert Bentley was just unbelievable for the last five yards. Well, there's no doubt about it. Albert Bentley really is the uh, the bellwether of the offense right here. Here the misdirection play, and he makes the catch. Jeff Donaldson comes up and sticks him on the five-yard line, and despite the fact that right there he grabs his face mask, Bentley makes the effort and gets it in the end zone for the score for the Colts. And so we're ready now for the kickoff of the second half. The score is Kansas City 16 and the Indianapolis Colts 10. Time of possession about even. First downs are fairly even. Total yards way to the chief side. About two and a half to one. And the turnovers, two and one. And all turnovers have led to points for the opposition. In the... And Dean Biasucci will be kicking off. So first opportunity in the second half. And Naz Worthen is the return man. Across the 20, the 25, the 30, almost breaks it. Alan Grant saves the touchdown. And so the Kansas City Chiefs, who ended the first half on a high note, with Nick Lowry's 44-yard field goal, open the second half on the same note. Well, here comes Nasrallah. Good blocking. He makes a cut right there. As, as you mentioned, if Alan Grant isn't there, it's he against the kicker, and you always like the receiver in that situation. A double tight end set. Two wide receivers, and Okoye the remaining back. And Christian Carey. And he'll have four yards to the 42. Now for an update, let's go to New York City. All right, Charlie, with a pair of third-quarter touchdowns, the Dolphins have come back to tie the Jets. Here's Marino going up top. First, he avoids the rush, and then he fires it out to Mark Duper, his first touchdown of the year. He beats a hasty retreat from the defensive back, James Hasty into the end zone to complete the 69-yarder. They had missed the point after following their first TD, so the game's tied at 13. That update from hasty retreat, Bob Costas. <laughs> nice phrase, Bob. That was very clever. Second and six. Not bad for a guy in the studio. And he'll be in Barcelona next week. NBC going there for a big NBA contest. Almost a touchdown. Rob Thomas had a step on Chris Good, And then he just couldn't hold on to it. That went through two pairs of yes. hands. Check out Good's vertical here. This is actually pretty good. This is a one-man pattern right here. They kept everybody in, and there he is. He's got him beat, but he doesn't quite get behind it. Right there, he's got an interception then. No. Did he touch it a little? No, yeah, just a little just bit, a little. but he's got to be frustrated. He could have had that interception gone the other direction. DeBer yeah, but the receiver also had a touchdown. DeBerg right there tried a little bit too much touch in that situation. Three wide receivers, third and six. And the pass is complete for a first down to Stefan Page. And the Chiefs once again are in cold territory as Mike Pryor and Alan Grant make the stop. Got a little bit of a zone here. Grant's playing him inside out, hoping to get inside help. Page right there splits the two. Look at that. Now that's a veteran receiver right there. Instead of running the hook as he's supposed to into Pryor, he comes back to the ball. That's why Stefan Page is right up there as a near Pro Bowl receiver at this point, averaging over 20 yards a catch heading into this game. And he picks up 16 on that play, and a first down at the 42-yard line. Back to the two tight end, Alfredo Roberts and Jonathan Hayes. And it is Jonathan Hayes' his second reception of the ball game, and he goes to the 20-yard line. So he'll pick up 22. 
And that, Mike Pryor was there and almost got ran over. Fred Young was also there. That infamous bootleg by DeBerg. It was used earlier in the first half to success for 12 yards, this time plus 20. Once again, the ball is out, and you assume, oh, that's got to be him misdirection right here. Now, look at the touch. Banks sees it coming, but a nice touch and a good lunge there by Hayes to make the catch and come up the sidelines. I complained about DeBerg's touch earlier, but that time was right on the money. And also a good look at the one-hand fake by DeBerg. You put that ball out and bring it back with that one hand. You learned that from Roger Staubach. And the secondary people assume that that's where it's going, and that's how he gets the direction going that way. And Okoye, the second back through, this time the Colts were waiting on him. John Hand was there. Good penetration by John Hand in that situation. Have an eye formation trying to get Okoye the ball to make his cuts deeper in the backfield. But Hand just screws everything up by getting too deep there in the backfield and making the play. Ouch. And Chip Banks was the second man there. It'll be a loss of three. Now they call it a loss of two, second and 12. Actually, this is kind of strange because Akoya's strong suit isn't exactly cuts anyway. You want him a little bit closer uh, to the quarterback. Pass is complete on the far side to Emil Harry. Taylor with the tackle inside the 15 will mark at the 14-yard line. The delay route for the Kansas City Chiefs continues to be successful. Uh, because of the fact that they got burned with some man-for-man -man coverage earlier in the game, the Colts have now resorted to a little bit of a zone. But because of the insecurity of the corners, they're backing up way too far. This is a little bit too much room here as DeBerg is able to find the seam. And a lot of room there for Emil Harry, even though he takes a big shot from Quintus McDonald. Another, Third down and three. As I say, another great name, Quintus. I love that. Love those names today. The Colts have their nickel package on the field. Mike Pryor makes the play and Chris Good was the man who tipped it. Chris makes a does a good job here. He's got him, Stefan Page, excuse me, Emil Harry for the touchdown. And, and they're right there, the one hand can't quite get a hold of it. Maybe he's the guy that should have had gloves. If you'd have those tackified gloves, maybe the ball would have stuck. Pryor with an almost interception. And it'll be fourth down. So a 32-yard field goal attempt by Nick Lowry. He is three for three in the ball game. Frank Winters is a snapper. Steve Fuller is the holder. Towards the right side, it is no good. There are flags down on the play. But Lowry misses wide right. The penalty is against Kansas City. It will be refused, and the Colts will take over on down. Pushing it back. Number 90 on the offense. Penalty is declined. That's on Neil Smith. First down. Timeout. The Colts have the ball, and the Chiefs have the lead. It's six points. We'll be back in a moment. We're back in the Hoosier Dome, and the Colts have the ball at their own 20-yard line. And Jesse Hester is back in the ball game. First time he's been back in the ball game since he had a collision in the first quarter. They checked him over at halftime. He's all right. Pass is completed the 41-yard line to Jesse Hester. Oh, he's more than all right, Charlie. Don't, I, I'm sure that was intentional. They wanted to get him back in the ebb and flow of the game. He was sitting out the entire first half trying to get his confidence. Look at the speed that Jesse comes off the ball. Right here, he's got his head down. you got to say to himself, he's not making a cut. Right there, in pattern, about a 20-yard depth. Trudeau gets the ball right in the middle of the field. Takes the hit, 20-yard gain. Big play for the Colts. Hester now, two receptions, 27 yards. And Trudeau back to throw. Has pressure from the outside. Here's the screen to Bentley. Billy to the 48-yard line and just a wiggle away from a big game as Saliamua got it. That was a big play by Percy, by Derek Thomas, rather, to, to get in front of the cover. Right here you get a chance to see they, they come with a blitz on the outside, and so this is actually a good play. But the blockers are a little bit too close. Right there, Thomas breaks through and gets just a piece of him, and Salamua is able to pursue from the backside and keep it only an eight-yard game. And Derek Thomas came up limping, was headed for the sideline, and could not make it. 
So we have an injury timeout as he is being attended to. Well, at the risk of understating the point, that would be a huge loss if he has to go out for any time because he has been the predominant pass rusher for the Chiefs. Clock is stopped with 9.56, time remaining in the third quarter. And now let's check the Hurts 10-minute ticker. San Francisco and Houston now tied at 14. Jets and Miami tied. Tampa Bay leads by three. San Francisco's tie scores a result of a 78-yard bomb from Montana to John Taylor. Seattle leads by two. Minnesota by ten. Now Seattle was able to come. Uh, New England was able to close the gap as a result of a Wilson to Hartley Dykes pass. One of the things I noticed when they were looking at Derek Thomas, Charlie, is that everybody has a different idea of what kind of footwear they want on the AstroTurf. The AstroTurf shoes that are made specifically for the turf, a lot of times players find that they give you too good of traction, and as a result, your feet can stick, and that's where the knee and ankle problems come in. And I think that was the case there with Thomas. It was his feet got stuck on the turf, and he twisted his ankle a little bit. Second down and three. Brooks is in motion. And nobody was there. The inclination here is to say that the coverage in the secondary was great, and that's what forced the sack. Jack Trudeau actually had Jesse Hester on a hook, but it would have only been about an eight-yard gain. But in this situation, Trudeau has to have that clock in his head to know what's going on right here to say, go ahead and throw it. you got to get rid of it. And as a result, Chris Martin is able to get him. You get a chance to see that Simmons is wide open on the other side of the field, but what you don't realize is that Trudeau has rolled to the other side, and it's tough for him to see the entire field, in this case, Simmons on the left side. Derek Thomas back in the defensive set, is third down and 10. Thomas is looking for a screen on the right side. They go over the middle pass, is complete to Brooks, and it's a first down at the 41-yard line of Kansas City, a gain of 18 on the play. This is a good job both by Brooks and by Trudeau in this situation. They were talking, they said it was a class. They called it the 1080. Class is in. Right here, Brooks circles around in that situation in the zone, gets past Martin in front of Donaldson, and Trudeau lays it right in there. The slide isn't for show. In a lot of cases, it's to protect your body and get your arms underneath the ball. Donaldson comes up and makes the play, but that's too late. First down, Colts. Brooks told us yesterday he and Trudeau came in as rookies together. They've been together for five years. We were just familiar. I know what he's thinking. He knows what I'm thinking. Here's Bentley. And now we're going to pick up at least one and maybe two, and that'll be it. Percy Snow and Salamua were there. You know, you mentioned Billy Brooks. Billy Brooks, I thought, was going to be a star. When he was a rookie in 86, he had 65 catches for over 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. But next year, when they traded for Dickerson, that, in effect, neutralized him a little bit. He's been averaging 58 catches a year, but truthfully, he has not asserted himself to the level I think he's capable of. What his situation reminds me a little bit of is Henry Ellard with the Rams. Henry Ellard was just a punt returner until Dickerson left, and all of a sudden became a 70-catch, 1,000-yard Pro Bowl receiver. Same number, too. 80 in motion. Pressure from the backside. Ball is loose. Thomas cannot pick it up. A Chief dives for it, and I believe has it, yes. Derek Thomas was looking for six points. He couldn't come up with it. However, Dino Hackett does. This is a great job by Bill Cower here to call this blitz in this situation. Kansas City has yet to, up to this point in the game, come with an all-out blitz. Here you see Chris Martin come untouched. There's too many people, seven people coming. He turns, he's stripped of the ball. And as you mentioned, Thomas has clear sailing right here if he can hold on to the ball. But he's just now back in the game because of his injury. And as a result, they have to settle for just coming up with the loose football. And we've got a timeout. 7.33 left to go in the third. And the Chiefs lead by go back to the fumble. Well, Jack Trudeau is looking left here. As I mentioned, they come with an all-out blitz. He sees Derek Thomas but does not see Martin. And when he turns around, there's nothing he can do about it. Martin strips the ball. Thomas unable to come up with it. But Dino Hackett amidst all those Colts, is able to snatch it for the Chiefs. And Kansas City has the ball at the Colt 46-yard line, first down. Saw that graphic there. The Colts are now last in the AFC in the turnover ratio. Play action to Okoye, then the pass back to Okoye. And for Christian, that is his second reception on the season. And Quintus McDonald was there for the defense.
Trudeau a little bit beleaguered at this point. He has really taken some big shots, fumbles, interceptions, especially in that situation because he had two big catches by Hester and Brooks that had gotten him down the field. And he had to feel pretty confident about himself. He's got to be very frustrated at this point. But give the Chiefs credit. They called the defense that he had yet to call throughout the game. Gain of eight, second down and two. And here's Okoye, and he's got the first down. As he goes to the 28-yard line, he picks up 10 on the first down. Fred Young makes the tackle. Indianapolis has to watch themselves here. Uh, obviously, on the defensive side of the ball, you're a little bit depressed by the turnover. But you can't think about that right now. You've got to think about stopping the Chiefs, because if you don't, then the Nigerian nightmare is going to run over you and put the game out of reach. First down at the 28-yard line. Page is in motion. And Okoye again. And he goes to the 23-yard line, so he has five. It'll be second down and five. Jeff Arad makes the tackle. We talked with Fred Young yesterday, number 56, the linebacker for the coach. One thing he said about Okoye is that you've got to stop him before he gets started, because if he gets up any kind of a head of steam, you're in big trouble. <laughs> Well, at 260 pounds and a 4.4640, I would say that, that Fred Young is the master of the understatement. Okoye has rushed for 50 yards. DeBerg has thrown for 194. Second and five. And Okoye to the 20. It'll be third down and short as Chip Banks makes the tackle. One of the things that the Chiefs have done is that they've been they've had their roster with a lot of people from other places. 20 free agents on the roster. Names we've heard throughout the day like McNair and Manley and Salamua, Chris Martin. These people came from other organizations and that's a credit to Carl Peterson and to Marty Schottenheimer. The ability to get those people in from other organizations and realize that they have talent and contribute. And what that does is that creates a camaraderie and all for one and one for all when you know that you have somebody who really appreciates what you can do. Third down and two. And Okoye has the first down as he goes to the 14-yard line and picks up six on the play. Give Harvey some, Armstrong and Fred Young with the tackle. I was going to say, give some credit to the left side there, the left off side of the offensive line. They did a good job opening up a hole in that situation for Okoye because the Colts had to know he was coming. And it's a first down. A report on Neil Smith. He has a bruised elbow. He will return defensively for the Chiefs. Kansas City trying to capitalize on the fumble recovery. And now moved to the 14th yard, 14th yard line. 14th yard line. Knocked away. Good defensive play. Mike here's, Fryer. Here's a classic case of, as they say, going to the well once too often. The misdirection play has worked for big gains twice, but in, right here you'll see Banks comes off the side and Pryor has Hayes and man for man coverage. And right here, Hayes doesn't make enough of a move to get open and Pryor bats it down. Excellent play. Banks isn't fooled either. Right in his face, he has to get the ball off. And Banks makes him pay for it. Ouch. Uh-oh, got to check the manicure. Second and 10 of the 14. And Okoye is pulled down by Chip Banks. So Banks has taken over the ball game. Chip Banks did an outstanding job there of stuffing Jonathan Hayes in the backfield. There's a sweet play, and that's got to be... That's, obviously, that's a tough block for the tight end to hook somebody like Chip Banks, but he just stuffs him into the backfield, makes the tackle for a loss. Chip said that once again, football is becoming fun for him. We talked to him yesterday. He's certainly playing like it. Because I love the challenge of the game day. And he's meeting it. Third and 13. Berg throws it is incomplete. He was looking for Page to break back. As Devine could not get away from the defender, it'll be fourth down. Good coverage in the second there by the Colts. Once again, they have three receivers going into the end zone. DeBerg in this situation needs to have somebody underneath so he can make a play. As it is, there's only one guy underneath, and that's McNair. He throws to the end zone. Good coverage. 
Holloway's excited about it. Well, he should be. Lowry, 3 of 4 today, an attempt from 35 yards out. And it is good from 35 yards away and is now Kansas City 19 and the Colts 10 will be back with a kickoff. Opponents of the Indianapolis Colts have now scored 56 points total after Colt turnovers. Alan Grant on the left and Stacy Simmons on the right are the return men for Indianapolis. And Nick Lowry, who just booted his fourth field goal of the ball game, he's four out of five, is kicking off. And here's Grant from the six to the 20, the 25, and returns across the 30 to maybe the 32-yard line. We've got a timeout. We'll be back to the Hoosier Dome in just a moment. As we come back to the Hoosier Dome, let's check the Hertz 10-minute ticker. Houston now back in front of San Francisco. Jets Miami tied. Dallas by four over Tampa Bay. Well, that's surprising because Tampa Bay now at three and one, their best start since they made it to the playoffs in 79. But an Emmett Smith touchdown has given Dallas the lead in the fourth. And Houston with that upset working. New England now by one over Seattle. Minnesota by three over Detroit. Jason Strahovski's field goal has helped New England come back from a 19 to three deficit earlier in the game. Pittsburgh by 10 and New Orleans by three over Atlanta. And Trudeau will be sacked again. Derek Thomas gets him. That will be the third sack of the day for Derek if he gets the complete sack. Of course, as you know, sometimes they share it as Moss was there along with Sally Amula. Once again, it's the angle situation here. He has him all the way upfield and shows the better feet. We were talking earlier, in the, uh, earlier that Moss had to take away the outside. Well, that time he did, but Thomas beat him to the inside. Now he's got to be thinking to himself. Three sacks he's given up on Thomas. Zafras has to get it going if they're going to have the passing game. And Trudeau has been sacked five times, DeBerg three, and it's second and 18 at the 24. Kansas City 19, Colts 10. And Bentley will get to the 26, maybe the 27, and that's going to be it. Albert Bentley has been 40% of the Colts offense this year. He has really been the workhorse, both rushing and receiving. Well, obviously that has a lot to do with the fact that the Colts were certainly dependent upon Eric Dickerson. I mean, the offense was designed to get him the ball and get that tailback as many opportunities as he could. And so Bentley has taken that role, but up to this point it hasn't been as successful as they might have anticipated. Five in the secondary for Kansas City, third and 16. Trudeau with pressure goes deep, and it is knocked away. Brooks, the intended receiver, and Stan Petrie had the coverage. This is a good job by Petrie. Of course, they want a situation where they want to throw away from Lewis or Ross in this situation. Petrie is not a starter. So he airs the ball out. Brooks does a good job here anticipating, but so does Petrie. Gets, gets his hands in the way. Good coverage by Petrie in that situation. And a good job by Petrie of reading the eyes of Bill Brooks. As you could tell, he didn't turn around until the ball was almost there. Ron Stark, left-footed kicker. Naz Worthen is the return man. And now Albert Lewis has moved over the offensive right side of the line. And does not get pressure. And Worthen takes it at the 29. And he's in trouble immediately. Good coverage by the coach. When the return man does not get two or three steps straight ahead, immediately you know that he is in trouble. 45 yards on the kick and kick off your night on NBC with the new drama series Hall High. They don't miss a critically acclaimed new series Life Stories. Tonight the show looks at the first 48 minutes of a heart attack. In real time, an extraordinary story. Life Stories also has the McMillions number tonight. Then best-selling author Jackie Collins brings her spectacular characters to life in an NBC world premiere, Jackie Collins' Lucky Chances, beginning tonight only on NBC. 
Kansas City 19, Indianapolis 10, 147 left to go in the third. And Okoye gets the call. Harvey Armstrong makes the stop. Now, this is a relatively young Baltimore Colt team, and they're doing an outstanding job on defense. For the number of times, excuse me, Indianapolis, for the number of times that they have been put in a situation where Kansas City has only had to drive 40 or 50 yards for a touchdown to force them to kick field goals in four, actually five of those situations, you've got to give a lot of credit to these young Colts. Irv Eatman now the right tackle, second down and nine. Page is in motion. And Okoye goes across oh. the 35 to the 37. Ouch. Donnell Thomas with the tackle. David Sott took that right in the back of his legs. Man, I don't see how I was able to get up from that. Okoye full speed has just lowered his head and decided that he wasn't going to make any kind of cut at all, and he hits him right in the back of the legs. Man, you're going to see some real pain here. Take a look at Okoye here. Now he's just going to duck his head and, and took a look at David Zott right here. Look at the backs of his legs. Ouch. It's a good thing that he's flexible. He must be doing his quad stretches because otherwise that could have been a definite knee surgery. Seven in the secondary. It is third and five. DeBerg throws before the break by Manley, and Manley could not pick it up. The ball got there before Manley really had time to make his break, but DeBerg was running out of time on his own. It'll be fourth down and five. From the outside, we see Irv Eatman hasn't, like we said, hasn't had that much of an opportunity. But he pushes him out in that situation. DeBerg had time. He just threw a little bit too soon. Good coverage in the secondary. Verdan takes it at the 20, slips one tackle, but the second man nails him. And that's Chris Martin. 43 yards in the kick, two yards on the return. And so with 13 seconds left to go in the third quarter, we've got a flag down. We're mentioning that Indianapolis has a young team, the most active rookies. This also doesn't doesn't show the fact that they've had 18 lineup changes from last year besides the fact that they do have 11 rookies so this is a very young Indianapolis team particularly on the defensive side of the ball you got to give them a lot of credit for the way they've been playing today the penalty against the Colts so the line of scrimmage goes back to the 12 yard line as a result of this young team Charlie Ron Meyer when he was talking to us yesterday he said that people are going to have to be a little bit patient because there are some players out there but it's very hard for them to prove themselves in just two or three games. You know, they, they've got to be patient, realize that some of these people are going to take time to develop, particularly, obviously, the quarterback, Jeff George. And Jeff George still bothered by that muscle injury. He's got a full stomach muscle. Colts have next week off, and then they play Denver. Steps up, throws, passes, complete, first down, Jesse Hester. Hester could turn it for six. And he is caught and pushed out of bounds. J.C. Pearson had the angle on him. Trudeau made this play happen, and the breakdown in the secondary is because of the zone. Hester is able to cut into the middle of the field where it's unoccupied. Right here, he hesitates, hesitates. Now as he steps up, they come up to meet him, and there it is in the middle of the field, wide open. Now the pass, I don't know. Jesse's nickname is the Jet. Right there, J.C. Pearson nonetheless is able to angle him out. And with that play, time has run out in the third quarter. And we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. We start the fourth quarter following that 61-yard play by the Colts. They've got a first down to the Kansas City 27-yard line. They trail by nine. And here is Bentley. Slips the tackle, reverses. Trudeau with a block. But the block is not good enough. He was putting the block on Albert Lewis. Lewis shed Trudeau, and he got Bentley. And Bentley said, one block, I could have gone. And you know what? That was the block that would have done it, too. Yes. If he could have got Albert Lewis down, he might have gone the distance. 
Here you'll see a lot of times when the flow of traffic goes one direction, if you're quick enough, you can cut back and everybody's going the other way and you might have a clear field. Take a look at Trudeau here, trying to put the block right there. He doesn't even see him. Great job by Albert Lewis to maintain his feet and make the tackle. Trudeau right there throws the block, eh, kind of weak. Great job of keeping his feet by Lewis. Good balance. He's able to make the play on Bentley. Second and five at the 22. Hester's in motion. Trudeau steps forward. Pass is complete. To Pat beats the tight end. 11 yard line. Gain of 11. First down. Chris Martin with a tackle. Once again, Jack Trudeau steps up in the pocket and does a good job of avoiding the rush. Most of the rush has been coming from Derek Thomas to the outside. He's aware of that now. Take a look as he takes his five steps. Now he'll step up and flick it across to beat you's in man-to-man -man coverage with the outside linebacker. Now the Chiefs have not allowed a touchdown in the fourth quarter of any ballgame. Only one field goal. That was by Denver. Trudeau's audible into something here. couldn't pull it down. Albert Lewis was right there. It'll be second and ten back at the 11-yard line. When the quarterback sees what's called the press coverage, which means the cornerbacks are up and they know they're out on an island, he's going to call the up, and that's what he does. Lewis right there, knows he's got him right there, makes a cut. This is almost a terrific catch as it comes down, but Lewis does a good job of keeping his arm active. Even though he knows he doesn't know what's going on because he doesn't see where the ball is, he keeps his left arm active, and as a result, he's able to bat the ball away and make it an incompletion. A good play by Albert Lewis. Second down. Trudeau fires. Pass is complete at about the four-yard line to Bill Brooks, and Albert Lewis makes the stop. Uh, giving the point of the catch, which was the four. That was exactly the same route they ran against the Eagles for the game-winning touchdown last week. He had Brooks on a hook pattern. There, it looks like he's going to go up, and all of a sudden, he comes right back to the ball. Albert Lewis has pretty good coverage there, but Brooks, as a good receiver does, comes back to the quarterback and gets a very generous mark from the official. Third down and three at the four. The margin is none. Kansas City 19, Colts 10. Trying to hit Bentley. Bentley did not look up. He wanted Bentley over the middle. Albert was there, but he didn't look back. Trudeau's got to be a little bit frustrated. I know Bentley is, too, because that was designed to get him the ball. They had a blitz from the outside. Here's Bentley on a simple circle pattern. He's looking at him all the way, but right there he gets, he gets knocked he got, out yeah, of the that's way. That's what it was. He couldn't get there. He got jammed up. And it was Derek Thomas and Neil Smith who were clogging the way. And Thomas does it intentionally. I don't even think he... I think he was cut to the outside to go to some, somebody else, but as a result, he makes a good play accidentally. And now a 22-yard field goal attempt by Dean Biasucci. He is hit from the 38. And it is good. So the margin now has been cut to six points. 19 to 13. And there is a man two sandwiches short of a picnic. Twelve and a half minutes to go. Dean Biasucci kicking off. Manley and Worthen are the deep backs. Good time for an onside kick, but they don't go with it. It wouldn't surprise. Well, you're a terrific coach in the booth. <laughs> Pete Manley, and he is dropped at the 10-yard line. Anthony Johnson, the rookie for Notre Dame, got it. Boy, that is a big play. Big play right here. A great kick. He'd have been better off just letting this go out of bounds, but a lot of times you don't know where you are on the field. And cutting back to where the protection is, back to the middle of the field, you give those people a chance in pursuit to catch you, and that's exactly what Johnson did. A big play on the 11-yard line for the Colts. It gives the crowd a chance to get into it if they care to. And speaking of the crowd, Kansas City's crowd finally got into it. First time in 19 years. Last week at Arrowhead Stadium, the crowd was so loud that they had to caution the crowd. First time it's ever happened, and the Chiefs took out a half-page ad thanking the fans in Kansas City. <laughs> crowd is into it here. The Berg's pass is complete to Harry. 
And Emil goes out at about the 17 yard line. It'll go for six, second down and four. DeBerg does a good job of quieting them there. Because, you know, you give to the fullback and he falls in there for three or four yards, the crowd still stays into it. There he throws the pass, gets them going a little bit, has the secondary on their heels. And take a look at this in terms of completions. Steve DeBerg, the premier bridesmaid, been with five different organizations, yet look who he has passed in completions. Star, Namath, Greasy, Dawson, and Blanda, all Hall of Famers. And here is Okoye. It's a tribute to his longevity and his persistence. It'll be third down and one. Okoye, now that was his 20th carry. He's rushed for 64 yards. DeBerg is at 15 of 26 for 200 yards, a touchdown and an interception, and Fred Young makes the tackle. Here's where DeBerg has been. With the Cowboys, of course, he got to learn under Roger Staubach. At the 49ers, he was replaced by Joe Montana with the Broncos, a pretty reasonable quarterback named Elway. And then with the Buccaneers, first Steve Young, and then next Vinny Testaverde. This man is the Avis of quarterbacks. He always tries hard. Okoye is stopped. And listen to the crowd. Chip Banks and Jeff Harrod with big plays there, shooting the gaps and making the play. Here you get a chance to see there's Banks taking on the fullback, but it's Harrod who comes up gets his legs and then with help from his friends is able to keep him away from the 20-yard stripe. Great play by Harrod and Freddie Young. And Harvey Armstrong. And Brian Barker will be kicking. Clarence Verdan is the return man. And the Colts should have excellent field position. And they trail by six. And lots of time left. 10-24. Kansas City is going to take a delay. They were hoping to pull the Colts offside. Charlie, this is really costly in this situation, and the reason it is is because you've got a punter, as we mentioned, who's been averaging 37.8 yards a punt. You don't want to take away another five yards and give the Colts that much field position. That was kind of a risky chance to take trying to draw them offside. I'm sure that the special teams coach for the Colts told them, whatever you do, don't jump. Marty Schottenheimer not too pleased with that. This is a lot of pressure on a rookie whose who's NFL experience up to this point is one and a half games. Good kick. Verdan backpedals, takes it at the 37. Chiefs have the coverage. And it is Charles Washington who last year was a coach and came to the Chiefs under Plan B. We'll be back. Tuesday. We're back in Indianapolis. Brian Barker of Kansas City with a 49-yard kick. And his first kick was 50 yards, so he's really proven himself today under adverse circumstances. In both cases, he was at his goal line or behind. Colts at their own 36-yard line first down, trailing 19-13 with 9.45 left in the game. And Trudeau will be sacked for the sixth time in the ball game. And this time the charge was led by Neil Smith. In a couple of plays ago, it looked like Indianapolis would have great field position. Now they're clear back to their own 24. Neil Smith just beats the blocker in this situation, along with Derek Thomas gets the sack. Ouch! Salamu going head-to-head -head with him here. Gets inside, just beats his man, as does Thomas and Salamua. And a loss of 12, second and 22. The ball back at the 24-yard line. You go over the middle to Hester. Oh. Pearson comes in a little bit late and then turns the official, goes incomplete, saying, no, 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 no I didn't really mean it. Chris Martin with the tackle at the 30-yard line. Let's take another look. It goes for a gain of six. 
Well, after getting sacked, he's a little bit concerned that he just wants to get the ball upfield right there. Jesse sits down in the zone, takes the hit right there, and that's, that's late. That is late. That's but late. the one thing that he did is that he rolled his head out and hit him with his shoulders because if he hits him with the helmet, then they would have nailed him for spirit. Think they so? still should hit him anyway. Of course should've. they would have. Okay. They gave him points for trying to avoid the spear. Absolutely. Third and six. Over the middle, Bentley. And he goes underneath to the 40-yard line. A gain of 10 will be fourth down and six. Lloyd Burroughs came up to make the play for Kansas City. And so Ron Stark will come in to catch. There's no doubt that he's bothered by the rush. You know, when you have third and 16, certainly Bentley can make the play if he breaks a tackle or two, but only making about a six-yard throw. He runs another four yards. There's no way he's going to get the first down in that situation. they got to hope now that they get the ball back. And Naz Worthen is the return man for Kansas City. And the Chiefs may rush 10. No, they drop back. They've got a return on. High, lazy floater. Fair catch is called for and taken at the 19-yard line. So we've got a timeout with 7.38 left to go in the ballgame. A 40-yard kick. And it's Kansas City 19, the Colts 13. Be sure to stay with us here on NBC for more great NFL football action as we present game two of our doubleheader. This could be a Super Bowl preview. Boomer Esiason going against Jim Everett, Cincinnati, and the Rams. That's going to be a good one. Coming up next over most of these stations. And it's a first down for Kansas City. Fumble! And the Colts have the ball. Mike Pryor. to yourself Kansas City is going to run the ball out they're going to give it to Okoye take some time off the clock and right off the bat he coughs it up Okoye has got to be a little bit disheartened here but that was actually some terrific hands by Pryor to make the catch off the turf and get going with it standard play coming to the back watch Okoye cut to the back side right here coming in Quintus McDonald makes the hit and strips the ball away from Okoye and Pryor picks up the ball, makes some pretty good yardage, getting to the 20-yard line. And when you talked to Quintus McDonald yesterday, he was really excited for his first start today. He certainly was. I asked him if he was nervous. He said, absolutely not. I'm excited. I want to get out there and make some plays. And this might be the biggest one of the game so far. First down for the Colts of the Kansas City 21. Now, Kansas City has not allowed a first quarter touchdown this year. They've allowed now two field goals. Derek Thomas with the tackle on Trudeau. And the margin again is six points, 19 to 13. You know, it would be interesting here if they might take a chance on the ground. Uh, what is happening here is that they're going with their best outside rushers. Both Smith and Thomas are coming from the outside. He steps up here, and if Thomas and Salamu aren't able to get him, he might have a big game. A draw play might be, might be a good play here because you know right now that they don't think that they can run the ball in. They might want to take a chance with a draw or a trap up the middle. is complete at the 10 yard line. Stacy Simmons. Kevin Ross with a tackle. Boy, that's a heads up catch for a rookie. He was still into his route, not exactly looking, and all of a sudden he looks up and the ball is right there. He knows he got kind of a gift. Take a look at this. He's got his head down, he breaks, he hasn't looked yet. There it is, the ball's there. Oh, look, I'll get it. And he's just about to fumble it, but the tackle actually keeps the ball in his hands. Winners McDonald, who made the last play. And Stacy Simmons, who made this play yesterday, Simmons was the barber, giving McDonald a haircut at the training <laughs> camp. Well, he shows he has good hands. They work for him. So does that make him Mr. Stacy? Oh, it makes him the barber. Mr. Stacy of Indianapolis. In zone, incomplete. Hester could not pull it down. And now for an update, let's go to New York City and Bob Costas. Bob? All right, Charlie, we'll slip it in quickly here. Here's Emmett Smith, the number one cowboy pick out of Florida. 14-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter. Tampa Bay came in at 3-1. and one. The Cowboys were just 1-3. and three, But the Cowpokes pull it out 14-10, and they were a two-point underdog at home. But they win it to take their record to 2-3. and three. Charlie? And here the Colts are trying to win their second game of the season. Down by six. Lots of time remaining. Second and goal at the 10, and here's Bentley. 
To the five, he's got it. side and a blitz and there's nobody left good lead block there to get thomas out of the way and bentley just lowers his head and does the mac truck thing again into the end zone for the touchdown drop play next. was a great call and we're now tied at 19 with the extra points to come and a hush really settles in and it's good Charlie, the kicks this year, as you and I know, have not exactly been automatic, so this really was somewhat dramatic to get that point in, give Indianapolis the lead. What I was talking about earlier is the fact that they want to pressure Trudeau from the outside. In this case, they blitz J.C. Pearson, and they also come with Chris Martin. And once they blitz from the outside, the normal people inside aren't there anymore. Here comes J.C. Pearson, runs right past him, and Bentley goes to the area that he vacated. Right here, he shows his power, head down, Runs right over Petrie and Donaldson for the touchdown. I like those kind of spikes, too. Here we see it again. Baldinger with a nice block out there to get in the way of Thomas. And there's Bentley running right over the top of Petrie. And there's a serious spike. Man, I score. I like that. Nothing premeditated about that. That's exciting. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the young defense who has played so well in the second half has to rise to the occasion and stop the Chiefs. Particularly the secondary. All those rookies and free agents have to start playing. Did I really say rise to the occasion? Yes, you did. Oh, boy. But he did, so it's all right. Okay. 5.53 left to go in the game. The drive, 21 yards, four plays. Bentley does it. His second touchdown of the ball game, 137. Fumble recovery by the coach. Turnover is costly to both ball clubs. And here's Manley. 15, 20. Still on his feet. Battles his way to about the 26-yard line. Albert Grant with the tackle. The last time Steve DeBerg steps out, stepped out there for the series, he had anticipated doing something very different. That was hand the ball off, chew up some time, get, get good field position. Now he's put in a position where he's got to get the people down the field. He might have to throw a little bit more than he wanted to. Kansas City first down at own 26-yard line. 5.43 left to go. First time that the Chiefs have trailed in the game. Incomplete. He was going to Okoye. It'll be second and ten at the 26. Jeff Harrod had him blanketed. One of the things I talked to Marty Schottenheimer about a little bit earlier is I mentioned that in their next three games prior to the bye, Charlie, after Indianapolis, they played Detroit and Seattle. All of the, all three of those teams were one and three. And we asked him about the danger of looking past, and he said there was no danger. He said he didn't think that was happening. Remember what Marty said yesterday? One play at a time. That's his philosophy. Forget what happened before. What's going to happen next now is what counts. And it is incomplete. Rob Thomas, it was over the wrong shoulder. He turned back, and he couldn't find it. It will be third down in 10 at the 26. As we mentioned a little bit earlier, this is not the priority of the Kansas City passing game. Drop back passes is not their forte, and right there, he's got him a little bit, but he throws it over the wrong shoulder, and as a result, they got a big third down coming up. Run first, play action second, drop back third. And right now is where they pay the price for that because they have to have success in the drop back passing game here on third and ten. Or go for the shotgun, which is what they should go from here. Let's see if they do it. The bird drops back in the shotgun, third and ten. Pressure up the middle, he's got to get rid of it, and it's incomplete. Donnell Thompson came clear. Woo! The way he 
came in, Charlie, I thought they were trying to set up a screen. It looked to me like Thompson and everybody else just came scot-free right here. You see it. I think It looked to me like he was trying to set up a screen, but it wasn't. He just beat his man so badly. So Brian Barker called on again. He has had a 50-yard, 51-yard kick and a 49-yard kick. Verdan is the return man. And the Colts have a return on. Pretty good kick. Taken at the 35-yard line. He's got five on the return. And that's all. And he is upset because he thought he could break it for more. 40 yards on the kick. And interesting, when he bounced the ball like that, he is flirting with the penalty because the officials will drop a flag and call delay of game. Now he gets away with it here, but he better not do it again. And the reason he gets and the reason he gets away with it here, Charlie, is because of the fact that switch possessions, the clock is out. Had that been a situation where he was running the ball and the clock was still running, they would have flagged him. Colts ball at their own 40-yard line, first down, and the Colts lead by one, 20 to 19, with 5:21 left to go in the ball game. One of the things that has to happen for Jack Trudeau in this situation is the last couple of drives have been come from behind, throwing on every down. Now they have to find a, situ a, a, find a way to take some time off the clock. He wants to get Bentley some four or five yard gains here, but they haven't been successful with that throughout the game. And here is Bentley. He's got five, he's got 10, he's got 15, and a flag is down. I think they're gonna call a face mask there, Charlie. Once again, they're having a hard time tackling this guy. And he's got, he's got a nose for that extra yardage. Five yard face hit, defense, number 42, and forced from the end of the run, first down. And of course it goes, and of course it goes to figure, Charlie, that right away I say, hey, Bentley hasn't been effective running the ball, and he busts one for 15 yards. Misdirection, good job by Beach on Martin. They're pushing him off and creating a lane right there for Albert Bentley. There he cuts up field and gets into the secondary, and right there you see it. Donaldson has, has a hand on the face mask. He's been having a hard time with him. He was the one that grabbed his face mask on the touchdown earlier in the game. Donaldson's seen too much of Bentley today. The ball at the Kansas City 39-yard line. Five minutes left in the game. First down, Cole. Hester's in motion. And here is Bentley. This time you'll get about three, maybe four. One of the things we haven't mentioned, Charlie, is the fact that the Colts only have one tight end on the roster. And here's a situation where you might want to go to a two or even possibly a three tight end set to go with the running attack, but they don't have that. They would have to shift an offensive lineman out there, and that would take away the threat of a pass. So they're staying with their three wide receivers, but still running the football. But if they do, it will be number 62, Brian Baldinger, who will go out at tight end. His brother, Rich, is an offensive tackle for Kansas City. So they're both in the ball game. Keeping it all in the family. Oh, a little yeah. nepotism today. Schottenheimer's younger brother, Kurt, is the special teams coach for the Chiefs. Second and seven at the 36. to the outside nice stutter step to the 29 he may have the first down Percy Snow and Albert Lewis on the tackle this is the exact same misdirection play a counter here going to the other side here he points he's, he's pointing to Stanley Morgan to block and Stanley goes nah I don't think so so he has to take on all three by himself First down. Yardage note of the second half. DeBerg has thrown for 60 yards. Trudeau has thrown for 148. Well, as we mentioned at the outset, he had probably the worst first quarter he's had of his entire career, but he's shown a lot of heart in coming back and making some big plays here in the second half for the Colts. And Trudeau told us, yes, he said, you know, every time I play well, I simply help myself as a player that is going to be here fine going to be someplace else that's also fun he's got a good attitude about that first down at the 29 inside handoff to Bentley and he's got a yard to the 28 clock now 317 and moving 
And when you stay on the ground, it does move right along. And the Chiefs want to stop it at the 317 mark. I have to question a little bit the Chiefs here in this situation. you got to know that they're going to run the ball. This would be a time to, sure, stay with your corners on the three wide receivers, but have your safeties playing inside a little bit and, and possibly a jumbo 4-3 defense where you have bigger people in the middle. Remember, Marty told us, let's go back to his example of one play at a time, the story that he related about he and Joe Namath. Well, he talks about the fact that in a game against them, he had him for a sack. When, he, when Marty was playing. When Marty was playing for the Buffalo Bills, he had him for a sack, slipped and fell on his face, and Namath was able to make the first down. And he said for five consecutive plays after that, all he could think about was the fact that, oh, God, did I miss Joe Namath? I could have had a sack. And on those consecutive plays, he got stuffed every single time until he was on his back in the end zone with a jet touchdown. He said, that's what I came to the philosophy of one play at a time. <laughs> Be sure to stay with NBC Sports for more NFL action. Game two of our doubleheader. And we've got a good one for you. The Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Rams. Coming up right after this one. The Colts lead by one. 20 to 19. 317 left to go. Trudeau. And the pass is complete. Hester pulls it in. And now the Chiefs are going to stop it again? Yes, they are. Earlier in the game, Jesse Hester ran that same route and kept running to the sideline. That's where he took the, that's where he took the big hit from Ross. This time, he holds up for two reasons. One, he doesn't want to take it in the head again. And second, he doesn't want to go out of bounds and stop the clock. Let's check the 10-minute ticker and see what has happened. Fourth quarter, San Francisco now in front by three. Miami wins, Dallas wins. I think that's a big win for Dallas. Tampa Bay had a lot of momentum going. I think that bodes well for Aikman now as his team is two and three. Seattle wins. And Detroit wins. A good win for Seattle. Charlie, I think that might be the best two and three team in football. We've watched them. They probably should have won a Raider game that they got taken away from them. They also should have won a game in Denver where they missed two field goals in overtime. That's a good football team, the Seattle Seahawks. And we've got them next week at the Raiders. That's going to be a very interesting yeah. contest. And Pittsburgh blows away San Diego. And New Orleans is leading Atlanta in the fourth. John Forquette is playing pretty well there. He wants to stave off the challenge of Walsh. As soon as Pittsburgh got a touchdown, they figured out everything they was doing wrong. They scored a bundle of them. Well, then they better bottle this for the rest of the season, huh? <laughs> it's third down and eight at the 27. And here is Bentley. And he's just inside the 25-yard line. Dino Hackett makes the tackle. Well, that's a little bit strange. I realize that it worked when they were down on the goal line, but that was after they had set it up with numerous passes. They had to, For a draw play to be effective, you have to set it up with the pass, and they haven't thrown it all this series. And something else that is strange is stopping it outside of three minutes. Normally, they start stopping the clock when you get closer to the two-minute mark or you get inside of it. That might be something that Steve DeBerg has talked over with Schottenheimer. You know, DeBerg is such a veteran quarterback that maybe he feels like he's good enough and effective enough to do it without the timeouts. Offensively, he can control the clock. That's the way he feels. Now, Dean Biasucci. He is hit from 38 and 21. He is now 5 of 6 on the season. So His long... This year is 41. His career long is 55. Now we've got the numbers out of the way. It'll be about a 43-yard attempt. Officially, it will be 42. And so Kansas City will take over at the line of scrimmage. Charlie, one of the things that we've realized this year, for whatever reason it might be, karma, serendipity, I don't know what, but the league-wide average for field goals this season is 59%, which is down nearly 10% from last year. Just like Lowry did earlier, he pushed it right, and you can see Meyer's reaction to that. They really needed that field goal because then they would have had a four-point lead, and they would have forced Kansas City to go for the touchdown. Now, in this situation, they only need to go about 40 or 50 yards because Lowry can kick the 50-yarder. You can see Schottenheimer is extremely pleased with that. So Kansas City, from their own 25-yard line, no timeouts remaining. First down, 2.58 on the clock. Time is not a factor here, Charlie.
The Burge pass is juggled. Almost intercepted. It's incomplete. Thomas and then Michael Ball had it and couldn't pull it in. It was a surprise to Michael Ball. He was going for the hit. You'll see right here. The bird goes underneath in this situation. Pretty good coverage across the field. Right there, as it's bobbled by Thomas, he has to reach behind for it. Right there, he's going for the hit, and the ball hits him right in the chest. If he had prepared for it, but of course when you're running over, you don't think the ball's going to bounce up. You're going for the hit. Second and ten. There's an unhappy man right there. Four-man rush. Incomplete. Manley was the deep receiver. Rob Thomas was the short receiver on that side, and neither turned to the ball. It'll be third down and ten. Well, Steve DeBerg, who was so pinpointed in, in the first half, particularly on that last drive when he hit six straight completions, in this case now, he's had six straight misses. He needs to come up with his third down completion because if he doesn't, then the time will definitely be a factor. DeBerg, five for 15, now five for 16 in the second half. And it is fourth down. Now are they going to go for it? They don't have any timeouts remaining. This could be four down territory. It has to be. He runs a pretty good route here. Page does. Pushes off and gets away with it on Grant, but the ball's just too high. Stephon can't get to him. And with no timeouts remaining, the Colts can simply run out the clock. So it's fourth and ten. And Kansas City has to go for it with 2.41 left in the game. down Kansas City page out of bounds that shows that shows a great deal of savvy on the part of DeBerg he comes back to the exact same play the exact same defender and the exact same receiver this time he's saying to himself I can't make that bad of a pass twice here page cuts up field and he looks back right there to fool Grant that he might be going up then he turns around and that gives him the space that he needs to make the catch and get out of bounds terrific route by Stephon page 236 Left of the ball game. Now what the Chiefs need, 23 yards. That gets them within field goal range for Nick Lowry. Anything beyond that, the bonus flag is down. Replay. Flag on this side, flag on the far side, and the pass is incomplete. Harry, the intended receiver. It looked like John Hand jumped off sides. Kansas City trailing by one, playing what now they call the short field. Goal. They just want field goal range. Left end, defense. Five yards, no first down. Left end, left end in this case was number 78, I believe. John Hand. Here you get a chance to see, yeah, clearly he jumps off sides. If he can get back in that situation, it would be, it would be a motion penalty against the Chiefs, but he didn't. Three five yards for the Chiefs. I was going to say, it would be a miracle of the way he was driving off of that. First and five at the 42. Kansas City, their own territory. Down by one. 2.31 left. Here's the draw. Excellent move by Todd McNair. He has the first down. And there's a flag. Holding against Kansas City. The Chiefs cannot afford a mistake like this. And you can see McNair is disgruntled with that because he did a terrific job there of weaving in and out. People might say to themselves right now, well, why would they Holding run the ball? They don't have any timeouts. Offense, 10 yards, first down. Holding on Rich Balding. Yeah, that's, that's tough right there. That's more than, that's about a 30-yard shift in that situation. They would have been inside the 50. You'll get a chance to see, watch to the left of your screen. There's Baldinger. He, cu he cuts back inside right there. What they're going to call in this situation is when the guy goes down like that, it almost looks like wrestling, like a takedown. Even if he doesn't have a hold of his jersey, if it appears that the guy will go down at a, at a very strange angle, they're going to call that holding. First and 15, it is intercepted. The Colts have the ball. Pryor out of bounds inside the five.
is he throwing to here? Right here, he gets hit at the last. He doesn't have the strength to get it out. He was going to Stephon Page, but when he gets bumped there by his own man being pushed in there by John Hand, Pryor is able to make the interception. At home, you're saying to yourself, who's DeBert throwing to? But right there, you see it. That was enough to throw him off balance. Saragusa, I've been waiting all day to say that name. Tony Saragusa is the one who actually makes a big play. It knocked DeBert off balance just enough so he didn't have the strength to get the ball out to Page. And as a result, Pryor makes his second big play of the day, the other being the fumble that he picked up. And it was Steve DeBerg who knocked Pryor out of bounds at the four-yard line. Now with 2 left, if they can somehow force them to kick a field goal, the Chiefs are not out of this game. Finley is hit at the four. It'll be second down and goal to go. Big hit by Percy Snow. That's yes. a good job of filling right there. And now the two-minute warning will be given to both benches. The score, Colts 20, Chiefs 19. Colts at the four-yard line will be... We were discussing what do you do now with two minutes left to go, but let's go back first to the interception. Well, we're going to get a chance to see it cutting inside. Here's my guy right there. It was Harad who pushes his blocker back there. He does not have the strength to get it out there. Pryor makes a nice catch for his second interception of the day. Good effort there by Stephon Page to try to knock the ball out. And now here they are at the five-yard line. And the debate here has got to be what kind of player are they going to call because maybe they could throw it in the end zone, but they don't want to stop the clock with an incompletion. Nor do you want to score too soon. Run some time down. Bill Moss makes the tackle. Bentley the ball carrier. And now the 45-second clock. Now they don't have to run a play, Charlie, until 110, and Trudeau should be cognizant of that as he looks over the sidelines waiting for the play to come in. Whatever the play is here on third down, he should wait till it comes down to 110 before he makes the call. It will be third down and goal to go at the two-yard line. That's what he's doing being heads up in this situation. Mike Pryor with two turnovers for the Colts, a fumble recovery and an interception. Bentley has stopped. Once again, Percy Snow with a big play. Now the fans have to understand what's going on here, and that is, is that maybe they're not aware of the fact that Kansas City does not have another timeout. They're booing this, but you don't what you want to do is take time off the clock. Here we see Snow once again, a big play by the rookie to make them kick. Now what they can do is they could let them, he's disgusted with that, yet at the same time, a play action pass I would think in this situation would have scored a touchdown, but he doesn't want to risk having the clock stop. So here, that's not a bad play, except for the fact that maybe he would have wanted him to get to the middle of the field. They might want to take the penalty here and give him a better angle farther back. 19 yard field goal attempt is good. Then again, maybe not. And the Colts now lead by four, 23 to 19, with 23 seconds left to go. Had that been an incomplete pass, let's just pick up the scenario here. Had that been an incomplete pass, they would have kicked the field goal, turned around, and the Chiefs might have had close to a minute left in the game to go down the field. And even without timeouts, that might have been enough time. Now, why he's not upset, I don't know. He's pointing to the clock, and he says 23 seconds, and he's disgusted by the fact that they weren't able to get it all off the clock. He wanted to get more time off of the clock. Now, it'll be interesting to see if they go into what, what everybody is aware of called the prevent defense. With, with some of the rookies and free agents that they have back there, they could be prone to mistakes here. And as the, you know, as the old adage about staying with what has worked for them, they ought to stay in their standard coverages and not backpedal too much to give them a chance to hit a play underneath and have a guy go 50, 60 yards. Now, a point on the clock, 23 seconds remaining. The clock here, inside the last two minutes, either half on a kickoff, does not start 
until the ball has been touched in the field of play. Here's another thing here that we have to look at, Charlie, and that is that he would be foolish here to kick a squib kick because then they're going to take some they take some yardage away, but in this case, he doesn't. And it goes out of bounds. Excellent job by Pete Manley in that situation. Now they get it on the 35-yard line, a free return, and there's no time taken off the clock. If he feels that ball and runs it back to about the 25-yard line, they could lose five, six, seven, eight seconds. And so we still have 23 seconds remaining in the game. The Colts lead by four, 23 to 19. And Kansas City has a first down on their own 35-yard line. Charlie, the crowd is grumbling a little bit over the fact that no time came off the clock, but they need to know that the clock does not start until the returner touches the ball. And in this case, he never got the chance. So that was a big break for Kansas City. momentarily and now it is started again that was a big sack for Clancy if he never made a sack that was a good time because the clock is going to start this is going to be the last play of the game and it is incomplete one second remains one second remains there will be one more play Emil Harry the intended receiver for the Chiefs are among the intended receivers. Now that surprises me because you figure the hometown clock guy is going to bleed that one out, right? If this is Kansas City, I can figure out why there's one second left, but this is Indianapolis. Time should be out. And now look at the defensive set. A four-man rush and then 25 yards down the field. Now there's the rush. Here's the second there. Now that's a super prevent defense. Now you would remember this game. I know you would. Detroit and the Colts. Lenny Moore scores a touchdown with 20 seconds left. They only have one play. They throw it out to Jim Gibbons. He weaves his way through everybody for a touchdown, but obviously that's not going to happen here. It is intercepted. Keith Taylor down the sideline, and he says, no, out of bounds. I got the ball. We got the whale. Final score, Colts win at 